Hello everybody out there and welcome to the All Inspiration All Invitational Round of 16 Group A. Tonight we're going to see the likes of Riser, Ribeye, Pesosa, and Boo as they battle for their spot uh, in the round of 8. Uh, we are in group stages, so we will see uh, group stages round robin. So we're going to see all those players face off against all those other players and we're really going to see a test of metal here today. These were the people that survived through the qualifiers. You've seen them play... Uh, you've seen them play once before, they picked their groups, and this one looks like a very interesting group here. Uh, if you take a look up that way, I have a little image here uh, showing the matches we're going to watch today. Now, I, I flipped the order a little bit, moved the uh, riser, the top two, down to the bottom, uh, seeing if we can get this in a, in a good in a good order. So, uh, big ones to watch out for today, uh, riser. Uh, sits at the number one of the OML, or OML, OML? Well, order of merit list, but ELO, sits at the top of the ELO list. He's uh, potentially a very dangerous opponent here. Uh, swing in hard on the Protoss. And another one who has been wished luck, I just saw right in the chat, people are paying attention, people are looking out for him, and rooting for him today is Ribeye. And we can't forget Boo out here asking about these jams that you were previously listening to if you were watching live on Twitch. Um, he's in the chat, he's here to watch his games. Uh, and I'm rambling, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get right into the first first game. And it's going to be a solo cast for about the first hour, and I will then be joined by Goner. So, first game is Riser versus Ribeye. It's going to be on Catalyst LE. And we're going to click this button, and we're going to get into this game. Yeah, i got to load the replay. Load this replay will disconnect you from Blizzard Services because the game updated today. Or yesterday, or very recently. So this is going to be a lot of fun. Hey, Ritters. Nice to have you here. You've been hanging out in my streams uh, a lot lately. I'm really glad to see you really getting into this StarCraft scene. So Riser is uh, currently got the GM border and ribeye uh, hands down on the diamond. So this could be a very one-sided match. Uh, this could be a completely surprise upset. I'm told ribeye has the capability to pull in these large upsets. So we're going to switch over. Thank you, Siegfried, for subscribing. Wait, is that a subscribe? Is my... Uh, oh, I, uh, thank you, Siegfried, for subscribing. I uh, thoroughly appreciated, my friend. Oh, we gotta get rid of this. We gotta get rid of this. It is... Right here. And it is me. We don't want it me. We wanna look at this game. And we're gonna set the best of three. And we're gonna start right here in the bottom right hand. Riser. The purple Protoss. Looking to take this game. Looking to go strong. Already starting out. Uh, trying to wall off his natural. In the bottom, or the top left-hand corner, excuse me, his opponent, and the light blue, it is Ribeye. Alright, so a little bit of a PVZ here. Some nice, some nice icons there. Uh, Riser <laughs> saying uh, Cannon Rush. Uh, kind of putting, uh, oh, there it is. Apparently Lenny. Fuck, fuck Lenny. Uh, Ribeye comes back. Fuck Lenny. Absolutely agreed by Riser. As we're just going to get a little bit of banter here uh, in the opener. We see, see a hatch go down. Nothing too aggressive here from Ribeye. As uh, is, is not currently a cannon rush. Uh, Riser's just going to come over here and see what he can see. <laughs> can we just skip the Riser games? Um, and hashtag fuck Lenny from, uh, from both Boo Radley and Classic Rock in the chat. Uh, I'm missing out on a meme. Please explain. I would love to know why it's hashtag uh, fuck Lenny. All right, we do have a nexus going down uh, for Riser. He's committing after seeing uh, nothing, uh, nothing aggressive. He's committing down to this bottom location, setting up another wall, or fit, continuing to set up his wall with the cybernetic score. A um, little bit of, a little bit of action here with uh, drone and probe, kind of poking around, seeing if he's going to deny the scout. Maybe he's trying to prevent. Uh, something cheeky with a pylon, and he's going to chase him off. He's going to take his third. So, I'm told, it's simple. Fuck Lenny. Lenny's print F, every, prints Fs every game he plays. Protoss equals cannon rushes plus bunch of tech and shit. Uh, I'm going to have to go watch some Lenny games. So, you're saying he either cannon rushes or he techs and shit, or he can rush in behind that techs up. Um, just take a quick look at what's going on. Get a nice little zoom out on the protection tab. 
Uh, nothing too crazy here from the Protoss. Uh, he has made his first adept. He's going to go across the map. Uh, take another look around, kind of a second scout. He's still got this probe out here. A little bit of minerals holding on to. Uh, these Zerglings uh, should chase this down pretty easily. Get a nice trap there on the rocks. Uh, but they're going to meet this adept midfield. And he's going to take a couple shots. And then he's going to ghost out of there. Actually getting both of these Zerglings uh, before finishing, uh, finishing his phase. Right. Oh, there we go. A couple links here. Um, from Ribeye, uh, actually in the base, going to cause a little bit of damage here. Getting one probe, two probes. A little bit of damage off that pylon before the Adept comes out. And this Adept looks like he's going to clean this up. But not after losing four probes. Um, Riser taking a little bit of damage here. Uh, not, a not insignificant amount of damage. Sometimes he plays pulls. Sometimes he plays Zerg and 12 pulls. Uh, what what is Lenny? Is he is he a diamond? Is he a masters? Is he masters masters rushers? I would love to meet a masters rusher. Um, all right, more more links coming out of here. And fun enough, Riser already out here with the uh, warp prism, about to come out. Maybe try to do some funky on the other side of the map. A couple more links out here from Ribeye. Uh, I'd call these safety links. He's not going to continue to push. But down here, looks like he is going to try to get a scout. But all the techs at the front door. So we've seen it, he's seen most of it, nothing... Oh, yeah, nothing else here. Off of this uh, Sacrificial Overlord. Master's Rushers. Yeah, Master's Rushers are interesting. When you when you have that much practice and that much time practicing your aggressive strategies, um, it's hard to defend. You, you face... You face cheese so infrequently as a player that it's hard to defend somebody who gets to do nothing but practice it. Um, hashtag fuck Lenny. I'm also being told he's a. Uh, we're getting this bio on neither one of these players. Uh, maybe maybe we can tell us tell me something about about Riser or Rebi here. All right. A little bit of dispute over here about whether or not he's got macro capabilities. This this Lenny. Um, Where did I I miss my? There he is. Warp Prism drops off here. Actually drops off a significant. A uh, number of sentries, they can force heal this ramp and take kind of the better, better fights they want. A little bit of micro here as Riser is going to continue to warp in up here at the base. Those roaches uh, absolutely taking lots of damage. Uh, no target fire, there's two go down at the same time. The shields are completely, are continuing to be put up, completely blocking the remaining forces from reinforcing this. A couple stalkers brought into, this, into the field to push these roaches. Sentries coming back, microing, microing back and saving themselves. Uh, damage now going straight uh, to the roach warren to prevent reinforcements. Uh, from being as effective right now. Uh, these roaches still suck it here at the ramp as the sentries continue this excellent display of shields. Um, they are able to make it up. The sentries uh, do, are out of energy, unable to continue this uh, assault. As he continues to back up and micro these stalkers here, getting a little bit of damage, uh, as much damage as he can out of this, putting, actually putting sentries on the low ground as they're going to be able to continue this assault up the ramp with the vision provided by the warp prism, and he's going to walk home to retreat. Some excellent aggression there by Riser. Very hard, very hard for a Zerg to respond to when half your reinforcements are cut off at the ramp. We do have uh, a Nidus Worm, though, in response, uh, coming up here and between the potential third and uh, third and natural for Riser. So we might see some nice aggressive play here as Riser walks his army across the map. There goes the Worm, and out of it, several Roaches are going to get this probe, and they're going to push the gate, forcing Riser to come back, calling in a handful of uh, Zealots at the front door. Uh, to answer this, this Immortal is going to do a lot of damage uh, as he comes to join this fight. Another Immortal here behind the line, kind of forgotten as they retreat back into the next uh, Nidus Swarm. He's going to pick up with a Warp Prism, and he's going to continue across the map. Now, this Nidus Swarm, actually, I love Nidus Swarms in response to aggression, um, but it looks like it, all it might have done was delay this aggression as he continues to push uh, back across the map. You see that in the production tab here, uh, forced to make units, forced to make upgrades uh, in response to, to this pressure, and he's going to have to come over here and defend the third with currently roaches and a spine crawler. Uh, these two, one second, two, these two immortals down here are going to go a long way towards making this very difficult fight. The sentry's cutting off some of the army, forcing the drones back, and looks like he's going to get this third. War Prism going forward, keeping vision on the location of Ribeye's army. The Zealots come forward, the tank uh, with charge, the tank 
absolutely most of this damage from the Roaches. Link's coming around trying to get a surround on the rest of the army, but Zealot's in position right after being warped in. There's a GG. Ribeye taps out. Game number one. Some great aggression there uh, from Riser, absolutely on point with his defenses. Uh, if we see more of that, this might be a, a shorter series. Let's my game load back into StarCraft. Give me a moment, please. Oh, no, completely logged me out of StarCraft. So uh, please give me a moment, and I will log back into StarCraft and open up game number two. And it looks like, uh, I mentioned earlier, Goner will be joining me, but we're going to have to do some time syncs with the replays. I might have to walk him through uh, where to get the replays, and it might be a little bit of a, of a mess, so please bear with us. Um, for those watching on YouTube, I'll probably pause during that moment while we sort out some technical difficulties. So, A little bit of a preview. Um, Ribeye says uh, he was just really happy he, he put up a good fight that game, and he says the preview of the next game is going to be interesting, so I'm excited. So we're looking at Riser Ribeye. Game 2, this one's going to take place on Blackpink. And uh, my UI is sorted, so we won't have that nonsense this time. Game number two. Any moment now, we're ready to go. I'd like to thank everybody again for joining in and watching this series. I uh, hope we're going to have a lot of fun tonight. So, spawning in the top right hand corner. Uh, currently 1 0, hoping to close this out in a two game series. It's Riser. Hashtag fuck Lenny. Uh, and the bottom left hand corner, his opponent, the light blue Zerg, it is Ribeye. I think I'm good and still within YouTube's terms of service. Definitely have this stream marked as mature. So, that's thinking, ladies and gentlemen. That's getting ahead of the curve because you never know what's going to come across this text. So, this probe. Uh, same same build we saw last time from Ribeye. Same opening we saw last time from Ribeye. He's going to drop the pylon at the down at the natural. This kind of large. It's, it's still a ramp, but it is a large opening. He's going to start his wall there, rather than securing up here. This probe's going to come down here, and he's going to look for anything uh, aggressive to see if he might need to respond before further uh, committing to uh, an economic build. On the other hand, we do have a drone. Coming up here, and looks like he's going to go all the way over here to the third, and maybe we might see a uh, an extra hatch. So, Riser is going to see this hatch. That might put him at ease for a little bit if there's anything aggressive coming, if there's going to be a third hatch over here on his own third. Um, yeah, demonetized. Um, I don't even know what it takes to be monetized on YouTube. Um, but we are at three subscriptions, uh, and that is absolutely fantastic i want to thank siegfried again uh, i don't think i can i can express how awesome that is um you are the man so this little uh probe here poking around down at the bottom ramp uh looks like we're gonna get not only a proxy hatch but a proxy pylon a very early proxy pylon and it's gonna be spotted almost immediately uh by ribeye as he goes to take an, uh, an actual third and spots this this pylon he's gonna force the probe at least to to walk away from a little bit and we'll see if he, he pulls a couple lings there he's gonna pull four more drones to, to try to handle this as uh, riser has to either either change his game plan or post under the pylon and there it is right there um, this hatch however uh, is still there still in a position gonna make it very easy a very short distance to create at least one third of his reinforcements um, and these five drones are gonna take care of this pylon now more pylons being dropped here as Ling start to hit the map. Uh, these drones absolutely trying to decide how to handle the situation. So they're going to almost chase the drone across, and two adepts come to meet it. Now these adepts uh, actually can really help and assist in this pylon landing. Uh, it's going to be very... Uh, this response from Ribeye is, is going to be important, how he decides to handle this. 
uh, making too many workers, not enough workers. We're going to get some shield batteries actually here. It looks like it's going to be... I'm taking a look at the new map. Stalker's being uh, created now on the other end of the map. Shield batteries kind of as a defense and a backup, a safe place for him to fall back to uh, as he shields and gets himself uh, a gateway going. So if I have to count, I think this is about your your four gate. We should see another gateway coming down soon. Four gate, early pressure, adept, and stalker. Some roaches coming here on the behalf of ribeye. And this, this spine crawl is going to do a good job of kind of zoning out at least the early rushes, the early pressure here. As long as he has some units in support of it, looks like Riser is continuing to uh, get some free shots here. Almost free shots on this spine crawl as they go back and heal up their shields really fast. Three, four shield batteries now at the bottom of the ramp. He just has to micro one at a time back, replenish all those shields, and he can keep this pressure up for a very long time. Uh, being joined now by two stalkers, two more in the way as the uh, warp gate's just about to finish up. Nothing happening over here with this hatchery. Uh, no units being created out of it, nothing being rallied. Uh, we do, oh, excuse my language. Three roaches created out of that proxy hatchery uh, right over here, hitting the base, trying to take out all these pylons while his opponent uh, moving in, trying to start getting, uh, start working on drones. Not enough units being created at home uh, to deal with. If you kind of have a rush uh, on each side, there it is, absolutely limiting two gateways off the map. Only this gateway now capable of warping and pressure. But there is so much here, and there are so many drones being lost on this uh, this side for ribeye. Uh, up here, two roaches and lings being handled-ish, uh, kind of well by probes. Our probes going down. Uh, this this two roach push. Uh, Actually, three roach push that has now become a two roach push that is about to become a one roach push. Uh, no more units, no more uh, larvae over here being spent as his money is quite low. He's got no minerals, no supply, and there's the GG. Second game taken very quickly by our boy Riser. Congratulations to Riser. 2-0. Uh, Taking his first map. I'm going to go ahead and make that note so I don't forget. Uh, Riser versus Ribai. 2-0. Our next game is... Um, I wanted to actually make sure we don't get a repeat player. So be even... Oh, right. I got to quit the whole StarCraft thing and reopen it. Because there was an update in <laughs> between patches. Um, let's take a look. We just watched Riser and Ribai, which means we want to see Pesosa and Boo next. This actually looks to be a very close fight based on their... Uh, just based on their ELO alone. Uh, but we'll see what each of them brings to the table and if their ELO is really representative of their skill. Because remember, this ELO is just based off of all invitational stats, wins, loss records, etc. Uh. Alright. Back into the replays. So we're going to do Pesosa and Boo next. Uh, game 1 takes place on Acid Plant. So we're going to start loading this up immediately. And uh, yep, loading this replay will disconnect you from Blizzard services. At least it works. At least it works. Alright, setting up. All the right things, looking at all the right places. And we're almost loaded in Acid Plant LE. All right, in the top left-hand corner, representing all in, in the all invitational, as every other player is, in the red, it is, uh, Boo, one of our fearless leaders. Hey, Shazam Poo, thank you for the cheer, thanks for hanging out. Good to see you, as always. Uh, <laughs> he says, 10, have my babies. Um, if only that was possible, we could create the superhuman. And his opponent in the bottom right-hand corner, in the blue, also a Zerg, and representing all in, it is Pasosa. So. As the overlords glide gently into the night, striving forward to spot their opponent, we have minimal aggression, minimum early cheese aggression happening here, as both of them move to take their hatchery, going down a little faster for Pasosa on 17 uh, and boo on 17 so this one uh, this map favors the uh, aggressor a little more than the last map we watched uh, there is no ramp it is a, a big open space it can still be I'd say it could still be walled off uh, but really as a zerg you're looking more to create a, a choke point here 
getting a getting a real wall, true wall isn't something we necessarily see often. Our ability to maneuver and defend. I said our as a Zerg ability to maneuver and defend. Uh, some of those early cheeses is a, is a little more dependent on our, our lings and banes and our roach control queens on the on the battlefield. So, um, but regardless, this is still not defender's advantage. There's not a, a high ground for them to stand on. Uh, we're going to see kind of a mirror build right now. Spawning pools are about to finish up for both opponents. Their naturals are about to finish up. Looks like they're going into some kind of uh, safe macro at the moment. Um, but we're going to watch these Zerglings and the number of Zerglings they make now uh, to really see what we're looking at. So four, four Zerglings, usually a safe defense supple position. Six could still be a, just a, def uh, a defending, a defense number of Zerglings. Uh, but when we start to see more than that, you know they're sacrificing their... When you start to see more than six, you know they're sacrificing their capability to macro for a little bit more aggression. But uh, first change up now, we do see Boo is throwing down the Baneling Nest. Um, but neither one of them is committing to a heavy number of lings. Uh, actually, there is going to be the the six, the fifth and sixth ling being produced now out of out of Boo. Uh, Speed is going to finish about the same time uh, for both of these uh, opponents, so it's not going to be an immediate advantage in lings. Uh, we are seeing a third base going down for Boo. So while he's he's grabbing his six slings and sitting over across the map, he's also expanding back at home. Uh, he's going to come over here. He's going to poke around, see what he can get done. Thank you. Let's see what we can get done. And uh, it is still 0 0, but thank you for the reminder on changing scores for the match. Uh, for those who are just tuning in, this is the first game of the best of three for Pososa and Boo. So, a little bit of, uh, little bit of uh, Ling consolidation happening there. Queen's in position uh, for defense. And these four Lings and this Queen should be enough um, to really push this back. But we are seeing a couple more lings being flooded across the map. Drones being pulled to help to aid here in the defense from Pososa. And it's P Sosa. So I like Pa. Is it Pa Sosa not good enough? P Sosa. All right, P Sosa. Uh, I'm being corrected on my pr uh, pronunciation, which is fair. P Sosa. P Sosa. Pa Sosa. Anyway, um, this is uh, kind of maybe a little bit of overcommitment here from. Oh wait, let me rephrase that. Not an overcommitment at all. Uh, there are a handful of roaches marching across the map here. He's putting down the spine crawlers now. Uh, for defense, getting his own roach warren up. Um, this counter attack, this counter push, as he's sent a, a handful of lings to the death. I, I actually really like this when they take a bunch of lings and they put them on follow to a roach, keeping them from getting too far ahead. Uh, then again, these links could have been pressuring this third base uh, while he had the chance. Uh, these couple links gonna here, gonna, are, these couple of links are gonna come out here and die, giving the spine crawlers just enough time to finish up. Uh, links, drones, queens being pulled here. You see six roaches in production for Pesosa as these two queens uh, trying to save this roach warren, but it's gonna go down. It's gonna limit absolutely limit number of roaches. This one roach, poor, poor roach here, is gonna get caught off. Um, as a couple of roaches continue to fight broodlings, uh, these two roaches coming to try to support and save this one uh, roach. I am afraid they're only going to uh, find themselves in the same position. Uh, it's, it's now four roaches versus six, and the roach count is everything here. A little bit of micro trying to save that roach, and they're going to go down. There goes the queen popping out, um, almost like Pazosa's. Excuse me, almost like Blue is bleeding. Um, <laughs> almost like Blue is bleeding units to uh, push this back. Uh, there are still some units. Uh, actually, he's not rallying units anymore. He's decided to pull his attack. Um, and actually, really good exchanges, I feel, for for Pesosa there. P Sosa there. As Sh Shazam Poof says, there's not enough P in his, in his in his name. I must emphasize the P's more. Nice little counterattack, actually. Uh, handful of Lings here sitting under the spotlight. Lings and the remaining roaches coming across. Uh, if we take a look back here, he. Did not get his roach horn back up, so this is going to be a, a, a ling, uh, mostly a ling push. Those remaining roaches uh, coming up the slow way over the ramp. And he's, if he commits to this, he's going to get his hatchery. Uh, but it might be at the sacrifice of the rest of his ability to continue to push. Uh, looks like his lings are trying to find the best position. Actually taking uh, way too much damage from those broodlings after they destroy the building. And these roaches are going to be chased down. See, look, they're falling the roach. He'd practiced that earlier. These lings are good at parading behind roaches. Um, but he's going to fall back, and it looks like he's going to have to survive another push. Um, 
he is switching over to uh, to layer tech, so maybe we're going to see a little bit of anti-air to keep this push, um, keep these these places defended. You see the spine crawler has been moved to the third to help uh, keep that area defensible. A couple banelings being morphed in here as there is a battle and some great surrounds here from Boo as he finished off the lings and then goes to assist in finishing off the rest of these roaches. Great surrounds. He's going to pick off the rest of these units and push his opponent back. Uh, on the other side of this, Pisosa is continuing to make roaches. He's con he's about to. They're both about to finish. Uh, plus one missile attacks, um, and the Roach Warren is being recreated now for Boo. Um, good call there as he continued to focus on the, the missile attack upgrade, and he's going to be behind a little bit. Excuse, excuse my camera. Um, he takes a look over here and realizes he doesn't want to take that fight uh, with the other hatchery. Right, Link's coming over here. And I'm working their way into the main, hoping to get past all these uh, very slow units and get some damage done, either to the queen or to the drones. Uh, going to require, oh, actually a little bit of a miscontrol there as he falls back. And these Lings get the cancel on the third base of Pasosa, kind of pulling him in multiple directions. Uh, five drones, six drones down over here. Uh, as these Lings get uh, actually an amazing amount of damage done as the army was pulled in two directions, whether they saved a third or saved the drones. They kind of sat uh, right here in the ramp a little bit, trying to figure out what to do. And Boo is going to pull back and continue to... Actually, uh, get a little bit of get a little bit of drones. It's four drones. He's trying to sneak in here. Um, every drone that um, Boo can get, you can see the worker count right now 30, 31 to forty six. As he's got a nice economic advantage, uh, and as long as he can survive this next push, coming from Pesosa, uh, without taking too much damage, he'll find himself in a good position. A couple banelings being morphed, unfortunately, at the wrong time. Uh, as this is a very dangerous roach army over here at the front gate, queuing up 13 roaches to help defeat this, um, picking off those banelings and marching straight into the natural uh, spine crawler uh, out of out of uh, position, uh, having to reburrow itself. Uh, these roaches stutter stepping in here and getting massive damage. And it's going to be a very hard fight to clear up as he's pulled the drones to try to pull this back, try to soak up some damage for the roaches and spine crawlers, the queens, um, and he might survive this. Picking up one roach as it, uh, picking up one reinforcement roach. Uh, combination of the queen, spine crawlers, because the good transfuses in here, um, he might be fine. Uh, so far, take a look at the worker count. He's still got a small worker lead, losing drones with every one of these pulls as uh, the roach count just right now isn't there to support uh, pushing back this attack. Not enough focus fire. You see a little bit of damage spread all the way across. It is a roach on roach battle. Uh, however, defender's advantage may slowly come into effect here as roaches are being uh, moved at a much shorter distance. A huge reinforcement, however, from Pesosa as he continues to push this in. Is he going to go? He's going to take the safe bet. He's going to take this third. This is a free third for him once he gets a spine crawler down. Um, and this is going to give... Bo oh, Boo's actually deciding to come over here and try to save this. Um, not coming over to try to save this. Um, decided to continue to produce more more army and maybe survive this next push as no doubt Pesosa is going to regroup and continue to push into this natural. Those might be the first ravagers we've seen of the, the evening. Uh, two of them getting cancelled though as Roaches come pick those off uh, before they have a moment to finish transforming. Before they have a moment to finish transforming. Okay. Uh, Absolutely fantastic number of Ravagers uh, being morphed here. Uh, absolute high damage potential here, especially when those biles start to connect. And uh, he's got enough roaches here to push back counterattacks as he takes his time um, forming those roaches. There are the biles. They go down right behind the army, hoping to, to, to cause them to stutter step back into it. Um, Boo stays his position. is taking the best fight he can right now as he's having to pull workers uh, from the mineral line to get the damage. Get, they, get this around to take a couple bits of... Uh, take the damage. 12, 14 workers going down. Even if he pushes this off, 17 workers going down. He's finding himself in a much worse position, and he hands game one over to Pesosa. Let's see how fast I can launch this game now. I'm on top of things. Almost on top of things. Actually, a fantastic series there. A lot of back and forth aggression from both players as. Each attack that was repelled and got some damage allowed the other to some time to reinforce. Um, it may have been that Boo just found himself trying to macro up a little too much behind the attacks and got caught uh, by the continued aggression from Pasosa. So we are currently 
1-0. Opening up the replay folder now, we're going to go into game two. And this one's on Catalyst, a uh, map we've seen quite often in... Uh, quite often in the, in, in the All Invitation, along with Blackpink and Neon Violet. Uh, very, very heavily favored maps in this competition. So, uh, we are going into game number two. Boo taking... Uh, uh, Boo taking a, a loss here to um, to his opponent. So, yes, words updating scores. All right, almost. All right, ladies and gentlemen, spawning in the bottom right hand corner, the Red Zerg, hoping to come back and take the series. It is Blue, Boo. It is Boo. Now. Question for Boo, because he's here. Is the second O, is there more emphasis on it? Because it is capitalized. Is it Boo? Is it Boo? Um, should I act surprised? And Boo! I wait for your comment in, in chat. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let me... Uh, ooh, a little bit of early, early, uh, early spawning pool here from the Zerg in the top left-hand corner taking game one, hoping to close out the series quickly. It is P. Sosa. Uh, Boo says it's just capitalized because fuck it, it looks better. And you know, I have to agree with him. It adds context. It adds it adds flavor. Um, I'm, I am a fan. So Boo or Boo Radley over here going 14 spawning pool. 14-14. Potentially 14-14. Um, didn't see the first couple drones. Not adding any workers to this mix. Oh, adding two workers to this mix. So, not to retract the early aggression statement. Maybe he was just being early defensive. Aggressively defensive. Getting this uh, spawning pool out ahead of time. Maybe he didn't see what he wanted to see from his opponent. Um, but he did start very early spawning pool. And he is actually looks like he's transitioning into a more macro-oriented build. Don't let me get ahead of myself, though. Uh, this is just an opening. A um, little bit of fun banter there in the chat. Um, <laughs> it says, uh, just like SOO or Sue, always second. And that's, that's brutal, because next to any one of us, uh, <laughs> he would wipe the floor with us. I bet he would win first in the All Invitational. Which somebody should get Sue into All into All In so we can give him a championship. Uh, first four links coming across the map. Boo is uh, hoping to get some information. Taking a look at his production, he's going to continue to macro up. So now I I will be interested to see before the first conflict kind of where they sit on on workers with this early commitment to a spawning pool and uh, kind of late to increase his supply uh, is Pososa going to find himself ahead was this just a decision he made uh, not to be aggressive um, and Shazam Poof is claiming he could beat Sue so we might have to really work on that recruitment who's, who's our recruitment officer get him on it um, I hear I hear Sue's teamless anyway uh, once all the big sponsors dropped all the players maybe we can get him into the all in Get him a uh, get him a jersey. Um, maybe after he can win a few pizza tournaments. Uh, all right, so a couple links over here coming to defend. Ah, eh, this one link poking at the third. Three hatcheries is a commitment. Uh, he might have to defend if uh, if Boog decides to get a little bit aggressive here. And what we're seeing is just a couple links coming over. Nothing that can't be pushed back by a couple other links. Um, and we're going to have a little dance here with some queens and some lings as they go over to the third base. So we do have a roach war in here uh, on Boo's side and seven roaches in production. So being aggressive might be exactly what he's looking to do. Um, we we'll take a look at the worker count. It does look like Pesosa has managed to keep up in worker production. But he's a little bit behind in the army count. So maybe the opener, maybe that's the opener, uh, maybe it's his opponent. Uh, but we are seeing a move out here as Boo actually 
has to push off a couple of Zerglings, uh, but he does have some Roaches at home to deal with. His roaches and a Queen, they're gonna uh, make short work of these handful of things. And now there's a fight, a little bit of this Zergling dancing happening here, right in the middle of the map. Um, somebody please tell me how I removed the CTL-13 <laughs> from my, my replays. I, I still don't know, uh, and we're gonna see it there. Uh, indefinitely until I take the time to figure it out or someone gives me that nice nice tip nice tips nice tips um, yep those are words so coming here we're actually having a these lings are kind of pushing back this army as he's, he's it looks like he's waiting for more roaches and banelings to move their way across the map um, in production he's got four banelings uh, down here at the bottom of the ramp that will go a long way uh, towards helping these roaches are actually in a great position these lings are unable to get this around uh, now these banelings moving up here are going to push away these lings um, and give him a little bit of breathing room to maneuver as, as Boo uh, continues to rally lings across the map. Um, a couple lings actually over here looks like they're trying to stop the, the rally and the reinforcement. Um, but this is a fair number of, of roaches. As long as they find themselves in a good position and don't get surrounded, they will at least do a significant amount of damage as more lings flood across the map. Um, eight more in production. A big group of them right down the middle of the map as these roaches are actually getting a fantastic amount of damage done. Seven kills on this one roach as it persists in life, and there it goes, as the Lings now show up to continue the crusade, and they're going to get in here, and it looks like they're going to pick their battles coming down here to try to save a handful of Banelings uh, that are being targeted down. Uh, more Banelings being morphed in as Pasosa taps out, and Boo ties up to game 1-1. All right, looks like we're actually going to have a fight here. We're going to go into Game 3 here in a moment. Uh, absolutely fantastic play there uh, from Boo. There we go. Good aggression all around. Um, keeping his opponent uh, on his back foot and, and not letting up. And, you know, and it works out. It's easy, to say, it's easy to say it works out when you see it work out, but... No, very good play. Let me go ahead and relaunch StarCraft. Because that's the game we're playing today, ladies and gentlemen. Relaunching StarCraft. Yeah, I see. There's a file I dropped somewhere in my StarCraft folders that put that background there. And it was, it was great when I was doing CTL stuff. But maybe now I just need a big all-in picture there. So... Back in the replays, we're going to go into Game 3 now. This one's going to take place on Blackpink, uh, one of my favorite maps based on the wording alone. I have talked more about how to pronounce and spell Blackpink than I have any other map in existence, and that just makes it fun um, for no for no real reason. Oh, sunglasses. Hello. We're going to do this one, ladies and gentlemen, in the shade. Because it's so bright. All these bright, bright people, bright players, bright fans here in the chat today. It is 1 1, last game of the best of three. Winner takes home the set, hoping to go two in a row, closing out his game against Pasosa in the red. It is all ends. Boo. His opponent spawning in the bottom left-hand corner, the Zerg, the Nightmare, the P. Sosa. Now we have the advantage here of not necessarily knowing who has won. The brackets for the round of eight aren't, aren't already drawn, so this could be anybody's game. Only those who played it and have lived it know the truth. And one of these players is going to go home with Nightmares, with Zerg Nightmares, Zerg Rush Nightmares, Roach Nightmares, and PTSD from Zerg Attacks, and trying to macro his little heart out. And one of these players is going to go home a winner. And the winners are the only ones we care about. Alright, Pososa here dropping a natural. Um, on the other end, Boo, most of the way through a spawning pool. So we'll see if this translates into heavy aggression. We are getting that ramp this time. A nice defender's advantage there, high ground. Um, good place to, to build a wall of, of queens and spine crawlers. 
uh, when this aggression comes across. We are getting queued up six lings. Six lings and not currently a, not currently a queen. There's, nope, six lings in speed. On the other end, spawning pool has just gone down moments ago. There's the gas. We're going 17, 17, 17 here from Boo. And no hatchery still yet. Um, oh, excuse me, 17, 17, 17 from Pasosa. And no second hatchery uh, yet from Boo. And there goes the six slings plus two more and a bending nest going down. So it looks like he is going to commit to taking this fight quickly. Let's follow this little green line, see what he likes to do. He's going to come around the long way, avoiding all the overlords, trying to save all the... The information until last. We don't have a drone scout, so his opponent right now is currently in the dark. Um, they are going to be slowly across the map. There is uh, Ling uh, 7 and 8 with 9, 10, 11, and 12 currently being morphed in. Uh, and they are queued up to move, actually rally outside the base, kind of get them going in that direction already. Four more Lings being produced, so that is 13 and 14. Uh, on the other side, the spawning pool is done. We have a the four safety lings being brought out here, um, and this this could be have a lot to do with luck and timing, depending on when uh, Boo takes his push. If the larva was just spent on drones at that moment, you know how much larva is available. Are the queens injecting? Um, the queens are being produced, but they are uh, they are a distance out. Depending on how he takes this fight, how he decides to go this. Um, they could be absolutely ineffectual, uh, the timing. And it looks like very soon, Pososa is going to know uh, that there is no second hatchery. And his response to this is absolutely vital. You can see him queuing up uh, six more lings now uh, on the other side, starting his own banding nest immediately upon seeing that, pulling back, putting down the spine crawler. He knows the aggression's coming. Um, looking like he might... Oh, there goes Speed. Speed is now kicked in. This gives him the absolute advantage uh, on a ling fight. These bane lings look like they're going to go right to the worker line um, but they're gonna oh he's gonna let one go um, and he's gonna get a free walk over here to try to pop a couple drones as these links are coming in one drone or one ling down two links down queen is out getting us around actually nice separation here uh, by his own fantastic separation from Pasosa. but the problem here is they're also not mining so two links go down uh, the queen is gone this the bailing nest is almost finished up as he continues to pull out uh, Zerglings to try to finish this off, pulling him down to the bottom of the ramp to try to keep him alive so we can build up some numbers, really push off this defense. Um, behind this, 12 more Lings being made across the map uh, and rallied over here as either Boo's attack is going to, to, to finish off his opponent soon or it's losing steam, uh, but he has to commit to it. He's got more Lings being streamed across the map and he's going to pull back uh, as speed is about to finish for Pasosa and really start to even this out. Uh, if you take a look at the, the worker count, really tells it all. Uh, 12 to 13 workers, uh, 12, work, 12 workers to 13, now uh, Pososa is not that far behind, and he's actually is managing to sneak out one more drone in this, as uh, Boo is doubling down with, uh, hoping for good bane connections, um, if, if this next push, if these lings and lings behind these in the middle map don't finish this off, or don't make uh, some great connections here, this could be the end, um, Ooh, that's a lot of lings to try to pull into a bandling. Actually, really good hits for that, for uh, Pesosa's bandling. Uh, four lings, however, on the other side of the map to one. This is not This is kind of a defender's advantage situation. How is he going to use it? What's he going to do with this? Um, as Boo begins to morph in more bandlings. Uh, this is kind of a back and forth for a second there. I thought Pesosa definitely was going to, to, to pull this off, uh, pull off this defense. But some of those connections, some of those fights were way too good. Um... I don't think it's on normal speed. Oh gosh, have I been? Okay, maybe it was. Maybe that's fast speed. I, I think that's too fast. Wait a minute. No, that's that's right. No? Yes? Okay. We'll watch it on this speed. Uh, let's see, I'll watch the timer real quick. But there are some fights going on. There's some links getting a lot of damage done. Blue continues to deal massive damage. Two more drones going down. More lings over here. Bane lings being morphed in. On this side, eight lings. He's going to have to answer eight lings from Pasosa. They're about to come out. Um, as eight drones have been killed. It is five workers of 13. Even with those 
uh, those Fantastic Banley, even with Fantastic Banley connections, it's going to be very difficult to come back from zero workers and one mineral. And Pososa taps out GG as Boo takes the series 2-1, to one, coming back uh, from a 1-0 deficit. Give me a moment. I'm going to check my options before I load into this next one because it's loaded into normal speed um, an increasing number of times. And I, th I think that's bad. So comment from Boo over here. He says he knew he could not beat Pososa in macro that day. So whether he was feeling slow or felt his opponent was at the top of his game. He decided the best way to do it was to be aggressive. We actually saw a really solid aggressive play um, from Boo. I think it was actually excellently executed. Really, really smooth, really well done. So, King, Roach King Pesosa is, uh, I guess, his title now. Roach King Pesosa. All right. So, I'm going to pause this. Um, you. All right, we're back. Uh, we'll see. Maybe I'll just try to figure it out in the future. So, looks like our next game up is going to be Pososa versus Ribeye. So this is twelfth in the ELO and twenty-three in the ELO. Um, expect to see Ribeye have a much better chance here in this fight. Uh, Riser, uh, a lot to handle uh, in his first match, and Pososa. Um, if, if he can get some time, if if he's left alone for even a little bit, I think he could be very dangerous here. So let me find the match while I'm I'm talking to myself here. Pososa versus Ribeye. All right, game number one is going to be on black pink. Again, good map here for a ZBZ. For no reason other than black pink. It's a very interesting map name, as we discussed last time. So a little bit of heads up, um, if the groups, if the groups are, if I have another group to cast, um, there's definitely a cast on, there will be a cast on Sunday, and I'm bringing in Adam the Spartan, another small, uh, you know, uh, another uh, YouTube guy like me, um, and later today, Goner should be joining us, uh, just so we, this is not a solo cast the entire night. So depending on the groups, as I was saying, the, um, if there are two groups, ready, I will do one of them on Friday and one of them on Sunday. If there's only one group ready tomorrow, I'm going to save it for Sunday. So, uh, get those games in, play them, get them uploaded in the replay folder, and maybe you'll have your game cast before the end of the week before everybody seems to know the results ahead of time. So, getting right into this, we have a little bit of friendly friendly, uh, friendly discussion here, a little bit of talk. Looks like they've never played each other before, so let's get right into our introductions. In the bottom left-hand corner, in the light blue, it's ribeye. In the top left, hand, or top right hand corner, his opponent in the red, the Zerg, very our very own P. P Sosa, Roach King P Sosa, going down with an early spawning pool. We saw this build last time, uh, this order of, of things, and I'm I'm not I'm not enough of an expert to say whether or not it's inefficient, but compared to his opponent, uh, he was a couple workers behind. Um, uh, actually, he's opting for a uh, fa faster hatchery this time than he did the last time. There was quite a delay, and maybe he supply blocked himself um, before that hatchery came down. He was sitting on 14-14 for a while. Made us think that he was going to be rushing, so I believe this is just something different. Getting a supply, getting a spawning pool down before getting a get your hatchery is is not any not much more inefficient, uh, very small differences, and it's really just about being safe and getting those uh, lings out a little earlier. Um, on the other end, a um, little bit of supply block there as he hits 22-22 well before uh, Ribeye, who is just hitting 19 supply and about to finish his spawning pool. So you can kind of see a little bit of differences there in combination of the macro and the openers that uh, set them a little apart. Um, slightly ahead in workers for Persosa. Pretty far supply block for that. But Overlord to uh, only just now be morphing. He was 22, 22 um, a little bit ago. Maybe my... No, that is definitely too fast. That is the right speed. That's too slow. Okay. We don't have that same problem anymore. As these links start going to town over here. Double check, right? Oh yeah, that's too fast. 
queen's gonna push that away. Come over here, make sure you get those injects in. And Banley Ness being dropped down here uh, for ribeye. Right, take a quick look at the unit count. We do have 12 lings out here uh, for ribeye, and they're moving across the map here. Um, Production's going to tell it all, though, as he's continuing to make 10 more lings. Speed about to finish up and a Baneling's Nest. Uh, excellent timing um, as his opponent is now forced to make 8 more lings. And there's the Baneling Nest in response to the ZVZ Ling Bane Fest. Three Banelings being morphed on the bottom of the map. Um, Ribeye's Ling's actually being really ineffectual here with Double Queen here at the bottom of the ramp. Um, creating himself a little wall and pushing him off for the time being as he continues to commit behind this with more banelings and more lings being called in here. On production tab, 16 more lings being made uh, for Pesosa. Pesosa. Here are the lings, here are the queens. Um, actually, not committing all of his force into this, allowing. Um, allowing Pisosa to, to get some extra extra damage done, and by not committing all his forces, doing even less damage than he would have initially. There is a handful of Banelings, though, and he's really got to get some good connections here. As most of the Banelings go down, one remaining, uh, and a little bit of micro there. Ooh, that's still a, a fair number of links to send in crashing to the Baneling. Gonna get the inject as the Queens try to uh, assist with the fight. And Pesosa chases off his opponent for the time being. Behind this, oh, there's the GG, and Pesosa takes the first round. Absolutely um, excellent defense there from Pesosa, and it looks like he's just had a lot of he had a little bit of practice against that, um, pushing off um, or facing off against Boo on uh, those last two games, uh, kind of working on his chops there in the ZBZ. So, we're going to load right on back in. And we're going to get into game number two. Uh, and we'll see if uh, Ribeye still feels the uh, still feels the need to cheese. Maybe he's not confident he can take it without it. Maybe he's just hoping to snag one free game off of it, but we'll see in a few moments. Uh where he decides to take this next game. Oh, I'm I'm sure you did, Rabbi. I am. Um, I got to tell a story though. This has got to be a journey. You're all following a journey. <laughs> uh, I have been informed that this was Ribeye's first opponent. So. Spawning. In the bottom right-hand corner, his second game for the round of 16. Group A. Uh, in the All-Invitational, it is Ribeye. Gas first. Excuse me. Uh, and there's a gas cancel here from his opponent in the top left hand corner, the Red Zerg. Hoping to end it in a two game in a two game battle royale. Uh, is two people a battle royale? I think it's still a battle royale, two people. I'm good with that. It's a free for all. This free for all game between two players. Pasosa. Alright. So we are seeing another uh, fast bonding pull. This one preceded by a gas here. Um, so we'll see what he decides to turn this into. Um, he is staying low on workers. It does look like he has a purpose behind this. Uh, I have been wrong before, but this could spell aggression. Uh, aggression for, uh, two games in a row. Maybe he saw a weakness in the opponent's defense. Maybe this is just too much area and too many ramps to defend. Um, Sosa, um, looking like 17, 17, 17 hatch gas pool. Uh, going for a relatively safe macro build. And it's again, it's going to be about scouting. What does he see it? When does he respond? His response last time was absolutely excellent. Immediately um, putting down his own banning nest, queuing up a lot of workers, uh, getting his queens down there to defend the natural. Um, we'll see how much information he gets this time. This is a very short rush distance here. 
Um, only a, a small step from ramp to ramp from naturals. Uh, and it looks like it's going to be, it's been, it's something has been spotted. He's seen these lings go across the map. That is a, a good number. Uh, not much he can do about it now other than save his minerals. You see he's got 400 in the bank as these lings come across here. Even before the spawning pool has a chance to finish, he's going to go right up this ramp. Oh, excuse me, almost right up this ramp. Um, four lings and two queens being produced near immediately um, for his opponent. There's six lings now in the defense as he continues to try to poke around this. More lings being streamed across the map as they're going for the eggs. Uh, they're hoping to stop these lings before they have a chance to come in. Uh, drones being pulled here to push off with this. And a, a decent defense, a really good response here from Pesosa as he, he comes down the ramp. Um, actually chasing him down, deciding to make that a transfer to save a little time and really just keep the fight uh, down here. That gives him some breathing room. It's actually a good split now. He's got uh, 10 and 7, now 10 and 9 on both sides. There goes the Baneling's Nest as Baneling's are being morphed here over here in this corner. Yeah, spoilers. Spoilers, Ribeye. Spoilers. All right, they are going after this Bane Nest as Baneling's uh, trying to make good connections. He's going to get it, not even a cancel. He destroys the Baneling Nest there. Um, actually managed to get a decent connection there on each of the lings. Uh, starting to outnumber his opponent. As one of these Banelings should connect, two of these Banelings make great connections. And you see the workers, worker count is absolutely diminishing. More lings being produced by Pizosa. A couple more being morphed out here at the bottom. Coming down here to save this hatchery. And there goes Ribeye. He's going to retreat for a little bit. Behind this, more lings and a hatchery coming down. And so he can keep up on this larva production. After a while, um, his worker count uh, is going to start hurting him. Um, these links come down here in an effort to take these banelings out before they finish morphing. Um, and they're going to get them. And the fight's going to continue up the ramp as we have a ling dance. A ling dance joined by a queen this time. Twelve more lings about to pop out. Several of them just now out of out of Pesosa. It looks like he's going to push this back off the ramp and get out of my get out of my home. He says, "This is my territory." And behind this, um, twelve more lings as the fight is shifted to the other side of the map. Uh, Ribeye now taking the defensive. Twelve more lings is on the way, and now he's got to save his own natural. It's the it's the counter rush. This is a counter play. Uh, you've rushed me. I've had a moment to stabilize and push you away. And now it's just a matter of who has the most links on what side of the map. How the Baneling connections work. And at the bottom of this map, it looks like he's going to go home. And Ribeye is starting to drone up behind this. Trying to do it a little safely. Um, just two workers being produced now. Three workers being produced now. Hoping he can commit himself to catching up on the macro play. Uh, his opponent equally... Deciding this is over, he's going to spot this push coming out now. Actually, I've going to seen it a while ago, and he's making six more. Excuse me, uh, two more bane links to try to push this back. Queen uh, escaping the surround, and the links taking the fight they wanted. Is he's pulling him down? Bane links almost connected there, uh, and this is going to be a bane link juggle as a handful of links. Ooh, so close to detonating. A little bit of miscontrol there as the queen is coming out here to try to get these bane links. Um, this is just a jungle. This is just a, a juggle at a dance. Oh, absolutely dirty connections there from the Baneling. Um, spine crawler being morphed in. One queen going down. Um, another Baneling right there on the edge, almost hiding itself like a, a an egg. And it looks like Ribeye is going to start cleaning up drones now. Uh, behind the 16 more uh, lings on the way for Ribeye. Uh, several... Ooh, Pesosa actually making drones in this fight uh, feeling he's got enough to defend this and he needs to continue focusing on on getting his macro getting a good cancel on all of those um, all those banelings over there on the side and pulling the fight out and pushing him back down the ramp uh, where reinforcements are going to meet and actually rejoin this fight coming back up this ramp uh, re-engaging here good good surround there uh, from both players kind of getting a nice wrap around I thought from ribeye before he retreated All right, five more banelings uh, being morphed, kind of defensive banelings from his, from Ribeye over here, hoping to stop any counter push. As you see, Pesosa, Pesosa is starting to put down a handful more drones, hoping to keep this alive. All right, there are a handful of lings coming over here, and we watch their path. Uh, it looks like he just wanted to avoid. Um, one avoid being spotted. 
Uh, his opponent doesn't necessarily know he's there, although with this many banelings about to pop out, it's going to be hard to see him get... Uh, it's going to be hard to watch Rubai get any kind of uh, push in here. Now, the this Overlord, have, uh, not sensing the the lings anymore. He has sent some lings over here to be a, kind of an early warning detector from this route. Um, but Ribeye kind of sits there a little patiently behind this. Pisosa continues to drone up. Seven more drones on the way while his opponent um, getting plus one upgrades. Uh, plus one um, carapace, if you will. Just a handful of banes here. Now he feels pretty good about these banes. I have to imagine since he's um, going to be a little more... He's trying to be a little more aggressive. His army's out of place. He's feeling comfortable uh, keeping those banes there just for defense while his army sits on the other side of the map. However... Um, Pisosa is even even with a little additional bit of droning we saw from Pisosa. Oh, that was very close and very dangerous. As he sends one ling over to try to take care of that, looks like this ling's going to get taken out, and we're going to have another ling dance here down on the low ground. And then they're, they're going to stop dancing, and they're going to go back to the respective wallflower ways. And then they're going to come up here. Maybe they're going to dance, and they're like, "Hey, would you like to dance? Only some of you." That's not the fight I want to take. And four banelings come over here. Uh, Looks like they're trying to push this away. How many how many lings do you send for four banelings? Um, the answer is one. Uh, it looks like they're going to pick them off before they have a chance to take out those lings. Sitting right under the top of the worker. Not the worker, the um, overlord. is uh, going to have a good idea where he's at. Uh, 20 more lings actually being morphed in for ribeye. It looks like he's maintaining the aggression. Um, but as he does this, he's slowly going to find himself... Um, I said out, out mineraled is a good word for it. Um, but when the banelings come into play, you just need good connections. So... Anybody's game. Absolutely anybody's game. Roaches, though, actually love this move um, from Pisosa. Roaches really start to put an end to a lot of Baneling play. But this is what we have. We have a lot of Banelings, and they're in play. A handful of links down here on the bottom ramp as he's going to split these Banelings up. And, ooh, ooh. I think it was three to four Banelings. Uh, more Baneling being morphed as these Banelings try to make connections. Um, it takes two Banelings to take out a worker, so there's one. And there's two. There's several workers going down now. Actually bringing the, the additional worker count from Pososa much closer to Ribeye. Uh, this queen's going to continue to poke it here. We actually have Ling sitting down here, uh, not getting in the fight. As five roaches are in production for Pososa. Five roaches to the 30 Lings on the other side of the map. Actually a really strong push here. Um, the roaches have a good position. Um, but if the Lings don't want to take that fight, I guess they just go around. A couple more roaches being morphed in here. Uh, second queen... And Pulse One Carapace will be finishing soon for Pesosa. As the Lings continue to flood in and get these excellent surrounds. Kind of forcing good, decent connects with the Banelings. But I don't think it's going to be enough as he's gotten all of the Roaches. A uh, couple more units over here. We're not quite in the fight. Uh, a little bit of uh, potential mismanagement down here. As he's about to take out a Hatchery. Um, and several more Roaches and Broodlings pop out to push this away for now. Um, more roaches kind of flooding in. If we can get a good surround here, uh, ba rough baneling connections there. Not really where you want to throw them, but damage is damage at this point. Um, as it's going to be a string of roaches facing a string of, of lings. And it's going to be about surrounds and positioning. And it looks like he's going to go ahead and transfer to a third base that he was able to get up during that aggression. But it's also showing that under calm and pose, he can continue to macro. Though having a third base when you've lost your second doesn't necessarily give him um, a lot. Now behind this, you see another spine crawler being morphed in here. He's getting a little afraid that the aggression will morph over to his side of the map. And a little bit of mismanagement here in, in the drones. He needs to come back here and kind of re-straighten out his minerals. Um, queen coming out on the third. He's going to push away. And now the fight's just going to transition down here. Um, not necessarily where Ribeye wants it. There's some definitely some very nice tech buildings down here. Uh, that he would love to put it into. Three more roaches being morphed in as he decides to take the fight and take a couple lings on the way. Gonna park these over here. Make a few banelings. Um, now he's gotta decide, do we do we take out the banelings? Do we go after the lings? And queen in a good position, doing the damage it can as ribeye continues to be aggressive over here uh, in the main base. Now actually, roaches are slow and they're off creep. He's going to get the evolution chamber. He's gonna come over here and have some free reigns on some drones. And ribeye's gotta decide which one he's gonna stop first, if he's gonna split, how he's gonna split it as... Uh, ribeye actually morphs away. Now, this building, this roach one, slowly taking damage. If we don't get another base down there soon, it will uh, die off of creep. So, he might not have to worry about it. There's just a ticking clock for roaches. Um, as 
Pisosa actually pushes the attack away and continues to push. Now, if we take a quick look down there at the workers, there was, there was 11 workers for Pisosa, um, but he did continue to macro behind this. And you continue to make drones, you can afford to lose a little. Uh, but we are getting these spine crawlers kind of into the position here, and this timing is going to be all. Um, just about perfect as these spine crawlers are in position. Um, these lings, these banes, these queens are, are taking this fight, but these spine crawlers are actually going to go down due to a lack of, of engage over here. Um, it's like one will go down, the roaches are able to focus fire the other one for quite a bit, and this has just been a long dance of ling, bane, roach. Um, behind this, Pisos is smartly continuing to drone up. Um, he had fallen behind for just a little bit, and it looks like he's going to get a little bit of damage on over here. Some, a decent bane connection there. Uh, knocking out a couple of lings as uh, this Bane Ling continues to try to get in there. Absolutely disgusting connections. And we get another Ling Flood. Uh, really heavy commitment to Ling here. Uh, looks like he did straighten out his minerals a little bit. Um, and Pisosa is... Now the one falling a little bit behind. A little bit oversaturated, just barely. And he taps out. Uh, GG, unable to follow uh, in those footsteps. Ten more cheers from Shazam Poof. You're my brother. We are brothers. Um, I think he's, he's, he's cheering as often as he's finding ads, and that is heavily appreciated. Um, thank you. And thank you everybody here for watching. I'm having a lot of fun casting these, and I hope you had as much fun playing them. Um, but we are 1-1 one, one now. Um, Reared by Pisosa. Pisosa tapping out with the constant flood of Ling aggression. He couldn't stop it with roaches. He couldn't stop it with queens and banes. And eventually he had to tap out as just at the wrong time the counterattack came across and he didn't have anything to answer for it. Buttons, buttons, buttons. Loading StarCraft again. I would love if, if this was fixed. I would absolutely love it if we got a, um, a, a more seamless replay. Um, Blizzard loves us. It'll come. Right? It'll come. I trust him. All right, ladies and gentlemen, StarCraft is loaded. I'm clicking replay button. I'm clicking game three. Thanks, Class Rock. Thanks, Ribeye. You're the man. That's my uh, group stage co-caster right there, too. Uh, game three is going to be on Acid Plant LE. And so we're going to hit this watch button. We're going to hit this load button because loading this replay will disconnect you from Blizzard services. Um... <laughs> ah, this is M says Blizzard fixing a StarCraft issue, and then a bunch of ah ha ha ha's from my man Shazam, from my cheerleader Shazam, Class um, Rock, uh, with the steady and steady flow of cheers, sitting at a nice, nice fourth place on my pyramid. Pyramid requested uh, by the fans. As we go into game number three, it is tied up one one. Spawning. In the bottom right hand corner, with near constant aggression, it is Ribeye. In the top left hand corner, in the red, doing the gas cancel, it is Push P Sosha. Oh, gas cancel going on there in the top. A little bit of, I want to send a drone across the map going on in the bottom. We're now at 17 supply each, and there's not a hatch inside for either player. Uh, there's something fun going on here, ladies and gentlemen. Something fun going on here, ladies and gentlemen. We s just now have a spawning pool um, created by Pisosa and he's just about to come down here to a natural. Now this is this is okay as we've seen this, right? We've we've seen this build before. This is a pretty normal economic build for him, but we we just got a hatch out of maybe I'm just getting ahead of myself. That was 17, right? Yeah, okay. They're both 17, 17, 17. We have nothing funny going on. I'm I'm just getting way too excited about openers. I am just that's a scout. That's just a long distance scout, right? He's not gonna morph that into like a spine crawler. No, no, nothing funky. Okay, okay, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm allowed one, one blunder per game, per, per minute, per minute. Um, all right, 
So this drone's going to come on back here. He kind of went out of the way. I thought we might have seen something different. Um, he was going way, way out here and around, but... Um, looks like speed has started for ribeye. He likes lings. Uh, I hope we see a lot of that more constant aggression here, so... Actually showed us a really good game last time. Uh, really, uh, both of them, both of those games were really hard fought struggle. We're kind of a, a constant back and forth. We're going to have a Roach Warren for Pisosa. So, you know, Roach King Pisosa versus uh, Ling Bane uh, Ribeye here. So, uh, whoever sets, I think whoever sets the tempo of this game, whoever sets the aggressive tempo of this game, has a better chance of, of coming out across on top. Um, but we'll see. We did see a kind of a tempo change off between both these players. Um, just a lot of aggression on both of their parts, back and forth, counter pressure, pressure. And he's going to see this Roach Warren, and his immediate response is really going to dictate the game here. Um, no, nope, he's going to see the Roach Warren, but he also has one on the way <laughs> down there in the bottom. Uh, he does have his own Roach Warren. Starting the start of a nice little little choke point here too we talked about earlier in the first game a lot of space here as these lings are going to actually push this drone back getting the kill here uh ribeye actually fantastic job he's going to delay that third a significant amount um also i didn't talk about it but we saw that evolution chamber um to give him a nice early advantage uh in a, in a kind of a roach fight and he's already started plus one melee. This one link here is going to wait out for a third. But Pisosa, here's the story of the day. The man who's starting off the aggression. Uh, moving across the map now. 20 links, 22 links, I believe I saw there for a moment. Uh, being morphed in to join this fight. Um, push across with these roaches and get something done. Now it looks like he's going to walk right up the front door and just start poking. Uh, on the other side, we only have a handful of links being morphed in here. But some spine crawlers. Uh, sp sorry, yeah, spine crawlers in defense, so handful of roaches, I expect to see more roaches, 14 more links, but he has started plus one, um, and if he can hold out until plus one finishes, uh, this will be a different, this will be, all these engagements will be absolutely different, you see the links here morphing, uh, the links, links, uh, doing that whole roach follow thing, they check the third, the third has nothing there, and they're gonna come back here, um, and it's gonna be a ling roach fight, uh, nothing being morphed, uh, links being pulled in, Kind of a decent surround there. Even a little drone in here getting in on the fight. Taking up a little bit of damage. Um, might have been just caught in that in, in a nice selection as he hit the gas. You can see he's that two, two out of three gas there. Uh, take a look at the gas count. Six, uh, looks like seven gas being collected to four. Uh, so we'll kind of see who ends up with the abundance of gas here. Um, if everybody sits on too much gas... Um, that could have been spent in the minerals. That's going to uh, give him a slow, uh, you know, a little bit of a disadvantage on roach production. However, on the other end, if Pisosa doesn't have enough gas, um, he'll be sending over more lings and roaches. And maybe that's what he wants. Maybe this is just a, a roach ratio. But nope, he goes back up to seven. Actually, both players are sitting on seven now. So that might just be the meta. Looks like these lings are come over here to check to see if there's anything at the third. They're going to see the third base up and they're going to be pushed out. All right, and we actually did go with the full saturation on three base, three gas. We have still sitting on seven. Gonna be about that gas, boys. As plus one is now um, halfway done for Pisosa, but plus one carapace has started uh, for ribeye. So it's gonna be kind of this game of catch up now uh, for Pisosa, and not not a lot of aggression here. It looks like ribeye is pulling back. He started his third base. Um, although he's continuing the. He is continuing to produce drones. Uh, quick look at the unit count. It is 12 roaches to 18. They're relatively close. Not a huge advantage. He's had actually a couple ravagers here for ribeye. Kind of to sort that count a bit. Um, so either player's game here. The only thing I can call attention to, I think, is the worker count for ribeye. Is a little farther behind. He's, he hasn't been on. He hasn't been on three bases long, but his opponent doesn't have uh, his third up. So we'll see uh, how well this plays. This continues to go too much longer uh, where the scales tip. 
We are getting Roach Speed uh, for both players. Uh, plus one is just about to finish up. And he's going to want to start plus one Carapace soon as to not fall too far behind. But opting instead for plus one ranged. Yeah, there it is. Plus one ranged. Uh, there is a push over here on the right side. A handful of lings moving across. Some roaches way behind there. Uh, they're going to get a little bit ahead. They have been spotted. There is excellent vision coverage uh, from Pisos all across the map. He's going to see all this. He's actually going to take out this overlord with a handful of biles. It's, uh, it's 100 minerals. There's 100 minerals in a supply block his opponent might not uh, be able to handle right now. Um, as these roaches are kind of find a position and kind of an angle to get in here. Um, I would love to see him take these out. They're in a very good and clustered position. There it is. Oh, disgusting. That's three. He is supply blocked. Um, he's supply blocked lower than the army supply his opponent, or the uh, supply his opponent currently has. That is 400 minerals. He now has to, to get that back, 400 minerals he now has to invest. That can't be invested in this army. That can't be invested in this defense. He spent 500 um, as Eric about to start coming out now. Um, but you know what? Never fear. He's getting back in position with that vision. These armies are going to clash. Um, a greater position now here for Persosa for a moment. Uh, he's going to push his army back. Uh, gonna push um, Ribeye's army back. He's gonna find some good bio. Uh, his opponent's gonna find some good bio connections, uh, and looks like he's gonna chase this down. A couple of roaches, actually. I believe these might still be rallying across. Um, some good bio connections. Are kind of the best you can expect there in a in a four v twenty. But Vistosa steadily streaming across this map. A handful of roaches kind of sitting there on the other end. Could be getting some damage done. Um, but it looks like this is gonna go, and the, the fight's gonna start taking place now. On ribeye side, and uh, these roaches are actually going to slow down reinforcements a bit, but they are sacrificing their lives uh, in that fight. Um, they're he's going ribeye's going to lose his third base. Doesn't look like he got too much out of it. A handful of larvae and roaches. Nothing has been mining out of there. Um, so it's actually a really a really excellent snipe by Pisosa. And he looks like Pisosa is going to go home. He's taken a fourth behind this. Um, and he's going to secure himself from any kind of counterattack. He's going to use this lead to his advantage. Um, if you take a look at what he's got uh, around here, P. Sosa, uh, putting it down a spine crawler. Help right here to help keep that counterattack pressure. He's working on saturating all three of his bases. Uh, he looks like he's uh, almost completely saturated, a little undersaturated because we're losing minerals on the fourth so on, on the on the original base. So fourth is up just in time, but we do have some counter pressure here from Ribeye. He's going to get that spine crawler in, in just one nice hit, but he can't stand up to the army. That is the death ball piece. So, so that is 20 army supply um, higher than Ribeye right now. And as long as he stays on, he keeps his opponent on three bases. This lead is only going to continue to, to spy, uh, spire out of control. The spine crawler is a decent investment since this is a pretty vulnerable angle. If he keeps his army kind of split up along these two uh uh, avenues of approach. That's going to go a very long way towards winning him this game. Uh, we do have a third base for a ribeye, kind of in the in the direction he's been sending his army, and maybe not the obvious one that's currently being spotted by the overlord. I wouldn't mind seeing a, a cleanup crew from ribeye uh, to continue to focus getting some of this down, but right now he's probably focusing on uh, so many more things. Hydralisk being made by Pisosa over here. He's getting uh, plus one melee and plus two carapace, uh, plus two missile attacks, and plus one range for the hydralisk. Um, well, one finishing up and one one just starting. Working on his own lurkers, four hydralis in into the mix. Lurkers can change this game immensely. It takes uh, it could take an uneven uneven fight with massive army differences and just brutally eliminate it as long as you get the right angles at the right time. Um, so I'll be interested to see if these lurkers just change the game. More spine crawlers, more static defense here. Uh, over for so we'll see if that pays off or ends up being a detriment in the end. But it does look like Ribeye wants to uh, stay at home for a moment and lick his wounds. Uh, so I believe Pisosa is going to be safe. And, and left alone, Pisosa is a dangerous animal. This arm, this overall supply count, 186 to 200, tells all. Hydras are being made. Uh, he's looks like he's he's getting his um, infestation pit. We should see a push into uh, Hive Tech shortly after. Um, there's the spire. Uh, on the other end, his opponent continuing to drone up because he's a, he's just behind on workers. Um, well, workers and army. He's he's just behind. He's got to catch up. But this is the story of the fight. This these lurkers are going to 
be the engagement. Uh, where these lurkers are placed, how the how he engages the army, how the army engages him, um, are going to be a big deal. He is supply block now. We did lose an overlord. So there's there's Pesosa kind of staying on top of it. Still with excellent vision all across the map. He's going to sacrifice a little bit of his speed and placement there. Um... It looks like he wants these rocks, and he wants this fight. Uh, excellent position for the Lurkers to fight on their high ground. Um, now, whether or not he, he, he can sneak them in a little farther, his opponent on the edge here actually going to take a massive, massive hits from these Lurkers, but this surround, um, this vision from his opponent, these Lurkers, uh, might, it just might not be enough. Uh, we're going to see, we're kind of watching the actually Roach Count severely diminishing here for Pesosa. He's pushed back by Lurkers. Um... It's hard to tell. You, you think your, your opponent has has the lead, and then suddenly they don't have an army. Behind this, 19 more roaches being made for Ribeye, but Pesosa with this absolute mineral and, and base lead, 14 and 23, um, he's got to find himself in a much better position. Um, he's going to find himself in a much better position moment, in moments. Uh, actually, just now, there's a moment there where Ribeye was not making uh, a lot to reinforce this. Uh, but we do have uh, good positioning and good lurker placement here. He can kind of pick up, pick away um, over at these larva at least, and kind of keep the army out of position. He is going to have to to rally his units. He is choosing to rally his units in this direction, taking a fight away from the lurkers. Uh, he's got lurkers backing up as he's going to lose a handful of roaches um, that try to rally across this map. This is the army. This is that that massive army and and macro advantage that Pesosa has now. Um, I'd say it doesn't matter how where your lurkers are, but lurkers are disgusting, and if you walk into them poorly, this could be the end of it. So, <laughs> Sosa doesn't know what a lurker is, Boo says. Um, no lurker den, but a greater spire being created by Pesosa. So instead of lurkers, it looks like he wants to go um, into broodlords. Uh, broodlord, lurker, they're, they're just different elements, um, different sides of the same coin, so... Little, huge, actually huge, little, uh, huge, um, uh, supply deficit here. Um, his ribeye is sitting at 82 to 90. If you take a look at ribeye, take a, a quick look around at his base. Uh, a little oversaturated, needs to kind of fix where his minerals are. This base is everything right now. It's, it's the only thing he's got that's fully mining. Um, a couple of roaches kind of poking here. They see the lings, or they see the lurkers in position. Um, they see we have one fully saturated base. He knows there's a fourth, uh, but behind this... Pesos just took a fifth and a sixth. He is gearing up for a long game while his opponent is struggling right now to hang on to the short game. Um, lurkers are going to be the thing that keeps him alive the longest. Um, but we'll see if it's enough. It essentially, is it looks like Ribeye's been taking all the fights. He's been he's been being the aggressor. Um, but Pesosa has just been defending too well. We take a quick look at the upgrades. They're, they're even with plus one melee, or with melee, yeah, melee being in Pesosa's advantage. So we can make a nice switch. This switch over to, to Broodlords has been in the making this whole time, uh, trying to really power up those Broodlings. Uh, we do have a, a Ravager attack over here. Now, this is brilliant. He's at max supply. He doesn't want Ravagers. This is something he can shave off his army. He, he gets massive amounts of damage for it, um, as he can send them to their death. Um, with a good bile, they could have gotten a Lurker out of it, but... He shaves them off. He replaces them with things he wants, which is corruptors and broodlords. So he's building right now his ideal army. He's preparing for the fight that he wants. Um, and I, I think Ribeye's going to have a hard time here um, finding a hold, finding a position, especially after losing that base to just a handful, just an absolute handful of, of units. Um, but good for him, though. He's getting out here with vision, um, really sending his, his overlords out. Now, these were overlords that had existed, I'd like to see uh, more being produced here, as he's about to be supply blocked. It's just a uh, handful away from it, um, and it looks like he's going to get supply blocked again as they find themselves a handful of queens. Now, Pisosa really heavy on the static defense. Um, it helps him. I guess it helps him be. He's got money to spend. Uh, he's he was maxed out on supply. Uh, looks like he shaved off a few more workers or a few more um, units when I wasn't lo looking. Um, <laughs> Ribeye asks if you're just memeing me now. Um, static defense, you know, at this point in the game, when you're maxed out, you're trying to spend minerals, is a decent thing to do. Um, it looks, sounds like Ribeye is just waiting for his destruction, so... Uh, we'll see if he has an answer, or he just decides to GG. 
um, when he sees these broodlords uh, moving across the map. I don't believe he spotted it yet. His his army, his overlords didn't get anywhere near this. But remember, they are slow. They're going to come across the map nice and, uh, well, nice and slowly because they're slow. Um, and Ruben actually moving out of position to defend this. He's not going to have vision on this. He might, he's not even going to hear it. Um, his broodlings, um, you know, die to the rocks. A uh, handful of overlords come out, or, sorry, uh, overseers coming out, and they're dropping lings uh, everywhere to kind of, I don't know, get in the way, uh, act as vision. Um, maybe this is the memeing that we're talking about. As Verbi asks, why meme? GG. And looks like the final <laughs> series, this 1 1 closes out, and Pesosa takes the match. There's a lot of broods. Legend says, Pesosa only has drones, overlords, and roaches bound. Pesosa doesn't know what a lurker is, and that's a lot of broods. So we're going to close this out, and we're going to start the next match, which is going to be Riser versus Boo. You're up, Boo. You're up for the Riser games. I think Boo was the one who asked me in the beginning if we could skip the Riser games. Um, maybe that was a self-defeating statement. Um, maybe that was a, a you know, a look ahead, some foreshadowing. Um, but I believe in Boo. I believe in the power of Boo. One-fifth of our management team, uh, I believe, if, I, if I'm not mistaken, in the, in All In. And uh, b -b -b Boo and Riser. Yep, Boo and Riser. Uh, Elo uh, number 17 and Elo number 1. Last game we actually saw Riser absolutely dominate his opponent with a mix of um, just some good techniques. Um, moved across the map with some warp prisms, did some good microing, uh, pulled his opponent apart in three different ways. So, um, yeah, Siegfried says Boo did not want Riser to feel bad for losing so hard. Uh, I would, I would love to see Boo absolutely dominate this game. I really would. These are um, you know, two Masters level players, um, according to this loan screen. Uh, masters and, and Grandmasters. These are, are two of our two of our strongest players uh, in the team. And I really am looking forward to seeing something fantastic here today. And is he going to be the one to do it as he spawns in the top left-hand corner, the Red, the Terror, the Boo? In the bottom right hand corner, the Protoss. Number one Elo in the purple riser. Alright. So after watching a, a, a daring back and forth between our boy Rib and our boy Pososa, we move on to our boy Boo. Riser starts off with, good luck, have fun, Dad. And Boo says, no, you. Oh. We do have a probe going across the map. Find out what he can find. A drone going across the map. See what he can see. He sees the gateways. He drops a, a proxy hatch. Uh, and in response to this, we have a pylon going down. It doesn't matter. I took a natural over here. I took you a natural. And we're going to have a couple drones being pulled. A lot of a lot. Most of the drones being pulled over here uh, to pull this down. Um, on the other side, he's putting behind it a spawning pool. He's putting a gas. And this probe's hiding over here. Uh, maybe to deny the real natural uh, as this hatchery is, is going to fall. And he's going to remake it. Look at that timing. Look at those clicks. He remakes the hatchery. He forces so much more mining time out of these drones than he's losing over here. Um, and it looks like we're going to have this, like, I want to take my natural fight that we normally see on the other side of the map. Um, but Boo's trying to do it in his opponent's natural. And we have this similar fight going on over here as Boo is actually trying to take a natural. And this probe is doing a nice little dance. It's going to fall. Um... Will we see the similar thing happen here as Boo puts down another proxy hatch, uh, this time to be met with a zealot. Now, can a zealot hit this faster than it can build? The answer is maybe. 
Yes, yes he can. With the probe's help, yes he can. So it takes one probe and one zealot to, to hurt this faster than it builds. And this drone is just playing games. Now, is this going to force a an aggressive... Is this going to force aggression? Is Riser going to have to now play on one base and do everything he can? Um, looks like we're going to see a Roach Warren because he's all adepts. And uh, Roaches and adepts are fun. Roaches are fun versus adepts. Well, it's not fun against adepts. Everything else because adepts. As Riser moves across this map, shading in, um, getting a little bit of speed, he's going to come in here and poke. And it looks like He's going to prevent a third. And he's going to go take a look to make sure there's not a third. Nope. Maybe focusing on these guys. They're going to shade in here. And they're going to do damage right here. One damage. There's two damage. Three damage. He finds a good spot in the middle line. Four, four, five drones going down um, as he shades over and out. This is Queen. There's six drones going down. Um, wait. Seven drones going down. Eight drones going down. Nine drones. Ted, this is disgusting, as he gets one adept down, and he still gets 11 drones off of two ad uh, off of two adepts. And if there was anything that paid him back for for sp spoofing around here in, in his proxy hatch, that was it. That was disgusting. And that's Protoss, ladies and gentlemen. The response to that is is what? What's the response to that? The response to that, you know what? It's not. It's not taking a proxy hatch. Um. Absolutely fantastic control there by Riser, though. Uh, stutter stepping at just the right pace, finding all the best positions, preventing the surround from the drones the entire time. Um, we're going to get a little pressure here, um, but it's going to be immediately followed by two more adepts, which are going to shade across the map and hope for a repeat performance as Boo continues to try to drone up behind this. So... Take a look at the worker count. He's continuing to drone up, but he's going. He needs to have enough to face down these two adepts. Um, he's going to see this this third. He knows it's there. Uh, second there, he, we should see another um, another shade into the to the natural or to the main. Um, he's going to pull these queens back, and there aren't any queens up here. Uh, a couple of zerglings aren't going to do it as long as he can hold a good position. Great micro as he finds himself in between the minerals again. Focus firing on some drones. Three drones down in this one. Four drones down in this one. Five drones down. These slings aren't getting good hits, uh, but they do manage to take him down after losing five drones. Now, on the other side of the map, we have a void ray being produced. A second void ray being produced as the first one's absolutely going to supply block his opponent and move across the map. Um, the second void ray actually queued up with the other Void Ray, so as long as he pushes this one across the map, it looks like he might be trying to finish this off uh, in in under 10 minutes. We do have a little bit of defense here at home. Um, looks like the Void Ray is, is just going to clean up. Um, clean up the Overlords until it's got some momentum. Uh, this is this is, this is an interesting interesting choice because you have Roaches, you have Void Rays. That's a, that's a good combo, right? You, but you have roaches to face the adepts. And then, then the void rays come out and they say, Haha, I made you make roaches. Don't you wish you didn't? Um, but in other end, we are going to have to see... Um, we're going to have to see this go up to light or tech. Uh, Hydralisks are going to be the answer, especially with this third void ray coming out. And who knows how many more queued up behind this um, as he's moving out to push. Two void rays this early in the game is something you're going to have to react to specifically. On the other end, we have... Five lings coming over, hoping to get a cancel, uh, or at least get a little bit of damage uh, on this third. Uh, these void rays all the way across the map. The third one uh, on its way. An oracle behind that. Um, actually, we do a, a good job in cleaning this up. There's the adept, gonna push him back. Um, these void ray beams, they get stronger over time. So we're seeing them kind of charge up, and they don't have to move. They want this base. There's a little bit of micro here as all the queens have been pulled. This is actually a pretty good response here. Uh, as a th third Void Ray shows up. Um, and we're going to see have to see some good transfuses um, from the Queens here to stay alive. There's a good transfuse there as he's microwing back Void Rays. Assaulting the third base as Roaches have now made their way across the map. Kind of some counter-aggression keeping his opponent uh, over there. Keeping his opponent tied up. Uh, void Rays being recalled. Um... Uh, being recalled and repaired by the by the shield battery coming over here to respond to these roaches. He's, he really wants to keep this third base alive. Excellent. 
excellent call there, bringing his units back home. Um, roaches, as you know, they don't shoot up. It's very difficult for them to hit void rays. Impossible, some would say. Impossible. Um, and then somebody would say, just make them in the Ravagers. Oh, and then you're right. Void rays are very slow, and that might be a thing they could do. Um, nice little wall there with a the Zealot. He's going to put the sentry behind it. That's going to give him a little bit of force field. And he's going to sit these... Um, Void Ray is right there, and he's going to sit his Lings right there, and they're just going to macro up a little bit. Void Ray is going to spot the Lings. Not the most effective thing, right? But Lings also suffer from the same problems that Roaches suffer from. They don't shoot up. Um, that's gonna They're going to bring them back, and it looks like they're going to go out again. Um, there are still a lot of Queens. Uh, out here on the map that can be called good creep connection here is going to allow Boo to really defend behind this. Uh, take a quick survey of the surroundings. Boo's uh, behind in workers. He's behind an army. Now, those void rays do cost a lot, and their utilization is sometimes limited due to their speed, but we are seeing a baneling nest uh, being put down as he wants to... Look like he wants to continue... Uh, wants to continue that pressure as, as a Ling army. Now, void ray over here. I think there was an adept somewhere if I... Not adept, a oracle. Yep, coming to join them. Back to the protection tab. We see the links coming over here. Um, they say, this is all I need. I can poke at Riser with links. I can I can ride my Zerg with no anti-air. With no anti-air. With no anti-air. I don't need an answer to your void rays. To your void rays. Um, that's it. Tempo, you can have that idea. That's yours. As the void rays push into uh, push into the vein. And they do void raise things like kill the Hydralis den because Hydralis are the answer to void rays. And he's gonna get it, but he's still gotta he's still gonna get out of there. There are a lot of void rays. He's gonna recall. He's gonna lose two of them in the process. That's a lot of Hydralis. Uh, back home, this voider had to deal with a couple of lings that were consistently being sent back and, and keeping Riser at home. Now, I gotta say, um, Riser's doing an excellent job of kind of keeping his army home and keeping the aggression on the other side, but Boo, an excellent job in, in really preventing his opponent from from spiraling too far out of control. The constant counterattacks and side attacks, answering with queens, um, not overcommitting uh, to Hydralis too soon, because the army he's about to face is going to be a dangerous one. Um, and he might have wanted those rocks by the time he figures it out. So, two immortals here will answer a lot of roaches. Um, these stalkers are uh, very strong. Uh, no upgrades on either end, actually. Plus one uh, missile attack for Zerg is is kind of fresh here. Roach roach speed? No, Bane link, Bane link speed? Bane. I think that's Bane link speed. Let me check. Aha, Bane link speed. And the other one is uh, Hydralis speed. Uh, started here. So not, not a lot of attack or defense upgrades. These are... At least they're both barebone armies. Neither one of them has found themselves at a disadvantage. Um, but they're going to recall home. They decided this wasn't the fight they wanted to take. And they're going to lose a handful of units in that recall. Um, pushing away over here with an overlord. Pushing an overlord away. So their army is... Oh! Oh, gosh! They recalled to the Mothership Corps! Oh! He recalled to the Mothership Corps! I didn't even know you could do that! I have learned something! I'm so sorry you didn't see that action. As I'm looking around the map for the army, they have found their way up into the main, draw their army all the way to the third, recall to the main, blocking with force fields, taking exactly the fights that he wants to take, absolutely obliterating all of the tech. There goes the main. The Hydralisin is down. He's gonna, he might even get this upgrade as his war prisms here to constantly reinforce. More shields being forced down. Boo is sending his army up one at a time. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the beginning of the end. These units are invisible. They're going to be more invisible in just a second as there's a BG <laughs> from his opponent as Boo absolutely BMs there right at the end. Excellent game. Excellent riser as he just maneuvers up and down that battlefield. Um, he takes the first game 1-0. Uh, and after... And after we um, reload StarCraft, we're going to get right into game 2. Um, BG. That was dirty and it was fantastic at the same time. Um, Riser absolutely outmaneuvering his opponent, pulling the whole fight to the, to the right side and sending the Mothership Corps straight into the enemy's base. And then what do you do? You either let your third go down to chase it on the other side and, and leave that army to, to, to answer it. 
and you know chase chase that mothership mothership over hoping that's exactly what he's going to do where you let it happen um that was dirty and that was good that was absolutely fantastic so we're going to get into game number two here as starcraft loads back up Mm. There's, I'm not good enough at the memes. I can't keep up with the memes. Um, well, game number two is going to be on acid plants. So let's um, let's cancel that. I, I don't know if I had the right replay. There we go. All right, there we go. So game number two is going to be on acid plants. So um, it's a good map. It's got acid in it. They make acid there. Uh, when they're done making the acid it probably gets shipped off to the Ravagers so they could shoot it to the air and make it come back down on you. Because I've never seen acid used in any other form in StarCraft. Is there acid? Is there acid tech somewhere I'm not seeing? Maybe that's what the Widow Mines do. So it does look like after this map, we'll have Goner joining us. So let me go and get him in the voice. Uh, oh, nope, oh, he's got a... He won't be able to make it tonight. He has some, some issues that came up. So that's fine. Uh, let's go ahead and get into this map, though. Spawning in the bottom right hand corner, hoping to come back and take this from his memeing opponent. It is Boo. He's got the tactics, he's got the misdirection, uh, and he's been absolutely aggressive all his games. He is Riser. Currently 1 0. Um, Every time we've watched him, he's, he's opened up in the same manner. He gets the he gets the gateway right here, starts his wall, and then he goes across the map to see what uh, his opponent is doing to get a little bit of early scouting. Um, it looks like what he's going to see is a 17-17-17, a very safe opener um, from Boo. Um, you know, if, if if I was Riser, I'd, I would try to end this quick now. Uh, I think he feels confident he can win the long game. I think he can. He, he feels pretty good about you know his mid game. Um, getting a quick and easy win here might be um, might be exactly what he wants to do. Um, he's gonna see that there's a, a hatch. He's gonna know he's gonna be relatively safe for a little bit. He puts down a second gateway. Um, it looks like he's going to take a natural, or nope, he's gonna take a cybernetic score. He's going to hang around a bit, and he's going to put down a pylon. Which, it won't be that long before he has to defend it. So, the interesting time, let's look at that, it was about a minute and 49 when he put this down. Um, that'll last until about the first lings are made and sent across the map. It will be outside the range of, of creep. Um, so, we'll see how he goes about this. Uh, this, might, this, is, this might be that aggression... I was talking about, he starts Warp Gate, he starts up um, two Adepts immediately, they can really get across the map. There's the Shield Batteries, those are going to go a long way in defending any push. This is, we've seen this before, um, we saw this in his first game, his first game, yeah, his first game against, um, against Ribeye, he absolutely stayed on top of it, um, absolutely stayed on top of this push, and it has been spotted, uh, Boo going over to make a third sees the uh, array of, of shield batteries. Five shield batteries uh, to stop this push. Five shield batteries and another pylon. Wait, wait, wait. Six, six shield batteries and another pylon. Um, as adepts... Two adepts. Two adepts and a gateway start to make their way. This gateway should finish about the time that... Uh, about the time that... Oh, oh, oh! Show! Oh, about the time... That warp is done. Um, and he can just back up. Anytime he's feeling under pressure, he's got near infinite life on these adepts. This is this is great. This is disgusting. You send these two adepts over here. You get him back just in time. Maybe he cancels these shades? Maybe he doesn't. There you go. He decided to cancel them. He sent him out there as a distraction to keep the links from surrounding. He's going to have to face down three spine crawlers. But there are six shield batteries. There, he's going to be able to warp in stalkers. He's going to be able to warp in... Oh, seven shield batteries, because because why not? This is the new pylons, ladies and gentlemen. It requires a little bit more work. But everything you take is just taken from these shield batteries in mana. 
Um, four, four adepts as he's continuing to push. He's actually getting a little dangerous. He's moving into, to, he loses one. He loses one adept. He gets the second one uh, over here just in time. He starts warping in. He starts warping in stalkers. He's got stalkers walking across the map. He's got stalkers walking in. Um, these spine crawlers move forward. They're going to be able to start doing some damage to shield batteries, but this one's out of out of energy. It doesn't matter if he loses it. He can take this fight right up here um, in the middle of these spine crawlers, and they're going to continue to power the shields of all his of all his um, uh, of units. Uh, he's not having to move. He's not having to micro. He can't be surrounded here. This is going to be all about transfuses. This is up to Boo to transfuse to pull the spine crawlers in the right position. I don't even know if you can respond to this. I don't know the proper response because right now Riser is absolutely walking over this as he continues to build an army that's not dying. This is an immortal army of stalkers and adepts. He is getting queens. He's getting ravagers. He's moving across here. He's chasing the queens around the map. Here comes a, a roach, but he's dead. He's already dead. He's dancing. There it is, so BM. We got Riser here doing a, a little dance right in the middle while the queens get free shots at him. He's not even running away back to the shield batteries. These... Stalkers are absolutely devastating the bottom of this ramp. Um, they're going to move up the top. And I believe this is the middle of the end. As uh, no more Korean barbecue at Austin, Boo says. Uh, <laughs> GG as Riser takes it in under six minutes. Um, two. So. Oh, wait, nope. Two. Oh, I'm right in the wrong place. Absolutely. Um, Fantastic plays from Riser. Um, even with a little bit of dance there right in the middle as the stalkers spun around. So I expect we'll continue to see that level of play come out of him. So stay tuned. I'm going to load up StarCraft again, and we're going to get into, um, we'll say, we'll say Riser versus Pasosa. We'll see that map next. And we'll finish off with Boo versus Ribeye. It does look like um, Riser is going to make his way into uh, into the next round. So he is he is the man to watch, the man to to defeat in this all invitation. He might take he might take away. He's got a good shot at taking away the uh, the full prize. And based on what I've seen in the gameplay, he's the person I put my money on right now. Um, if y'all band together and start working strategies and analyzing his play and, you know, building some build orders just for him, um, that might be exactly what you need to do. So, um, let's go up to the replay folder. Let's get Riser and Pasosa. So, we've seen Riser 2-0 Ribeye. We've seen him 2-0 um, Boo. Um, now, let's see what our good friend P. Sosa can do. And he starts off in black pink. Let's see. Make sure I have all my my things up and my, my people's here. Um, Sampri says he just finished up his game, so we might have a we might have a group enough groups ready for um, for a Friday show. But we'll find out. Let's make sure. Right? Yeah, that's too fast. Get into the game here. I'm gonna get into the game. I'll zoom it out. Mark it a best of three. And ladies and gentlemen, it looks like we're doing purple and yellow in the bottom left-hand corner. Uh, the only Zerg not in this group. Absolutely dominating his opponent with cheese and tactics and a little bit of BM. It is Riser. Thank you again for the cheer, Shazam. You're my, my cheer hero. Uh, Siegfried down there with the sub today. You are, my, you are also my hero. Um... I have three subs now. You guys are super fantastic. I just now need to make other fantastic friends. And I'll be off to a wonderful career as a streamer. Let's make these memes dreams. Um, I'm waiting for you to... I'm waiting, I've been waiting for you or Tech to stream there, Sig. So I, I have some Twitch Prime subs. And some cheer monies to send your way. Um, so let me know. All right, a little bit of um, 
A little bit of drone. Oh, he tried. The probe tried to stop that third, but it does look like Pesosa is going to have th start his third base uh, before Riser gets his... Um, Oh, well, he's got three bases, three bases before pool, and he's he's got it before his opponent takes his natural. So behind this, uh, Riser's got to be feeling pretty good about uh, any early aggression. Uh, that pool just going down now. The gas just started. More drones on the way uh, for Pisosa. Uh, back home, picking up his second gas, going for a cybernetic core. So normally when he's been aggressive, we've seen uh, two gateways first. Uh, two gateways before a nexus, if I remember correctly. So maybe going a little slower here. Uh, he doesn't want to. Um, I imagine he doesn't want to fail a push, or uh, not necessarily fail it, but you know have a slow push that eventually gets pushed back due to this really greedy build here. Um, but I also think he could punish this. He could punish this with some nice early aggression. Hey, we'll put a little cannon there. Maybe a little cannon rush right down here. Um, I guess Candy Rush is dead, though, and we're doing shield batteries and adepts, because why not? There's the first adept coming out, and he's got a starport now. So we might see Void Rays, we might see an Oracle come across the map, uh, try to get some damage done. We do have this drone going back to mining, and looks to be just kind of a, a really economic build here for Pisosa. He's got eight lings coming on the way, though. Eight is a lot of lings. We have a couple drones being pulled over here. Looks like... Um, Maybe they're just going over here to mine. Um, there is an adept, though, uh, in the base. He's, he's, he's working on larva. How fast does he kill larva? He doesn't kill. He, now he's hitting the base. Um, we do have a mark being called uh, by Riser. He's, yeah, I guess he's summoning. He's trying to summon some lings over here to fight these adepts. Uh, I'm not sure what that was about. Uh, what do we have over here in the chat? Um... Looks like uh, Siegfried Sock, and he says he, he static shocked his motherboard while putting it in, and now needs a new one. Ooh, those aren't cheap these days. Um, graphics cards, aren't which really cheap, but yeah, there we go. Shazam says, good thing it wasn't your graphics card. Um, I'm sorry to hear that, Sig. That's, uh, it's, it is rough to lose a motherboard. Those things aren't cheap. And Ling's a little bit of move command here into the Adept, uh, trying to sneak through. Uh, but we do have a huge flood of Ling's. Uh, this oracle's got to choose the right moment to turn itself on as we have 14 more lings on the way. So what looked to be economic was an absolute ling fest. Um, and we, he definitely needs some units. This, an oracle's going to be good because it turns out lings don't shoot up. But there's only so much energy he has on him. And he's he initiated the energy, right? So the lings run away and they force his energy to continue to run out because it costs something to turn on. Um, so he's either got to commit to pushing this or get, taking hits from adepts and oracles. I wish you very good at uh, handling lings. Now, this adept is just being recharged. You see his shields are going down by 10 and up by 10. Not enough lings you can get us around to start this. So we're watching just a murder of lings. Now, on the other side, this oracle is doing its own business, taking out spore crawls, taking out lings on the other side. Um, as these lings continue to kind of... They're, they're looking like they're going to get the cyberdex core as he starts a couple more pylons here in the back. Um, now, there is a big gap, but there's just no lings to handle it because he sacrificed everything to it. If we take a quick look at this oracle, it looks like he got about four kills... Uh, before he ran out of out of fuel, um, we have this this phoenix. So constant units being produced out of the starport, um, reproducing his cybernetic core. He's got a handful of depths, enough to really push back any aggression. That was a lot of lings. Uh, was it worth it? Did it get any damage? Nah, uh, um. So the suggestion here for Siegfried and his missing uh, motherboard was to borrow the money from the register. Mr. McDonald's will pay for it. <laughs> uh, I normally just take spare change from the drive through that we're supposed to give to charity. <laughs> um, uh, that would be horrible if true. So, ladies and gentlemen, we have... Uh, it's just an attempt to macro up behind this, it looks like. There's a lot of things... There's a handful of things being produced, so and these oracles are getting uh, 20 kills on one oracle, uh, 6 kills on the other as they continue to, to, to get drones... And remember, not all those are drones. He did do a lot of, uh, of ling damage over here when this wall was being pushed. Um, but huge, huge... I mean, if you take a look at the numbers, it's 47 drones to 42... Uh, sorry, 42, 42 drones uh, to 47 probes. So after all the damage that these oracles have done, 
over here, um, because he's on three bases, he can still take those losses. He's only a little bit behind. Now, there is a supply block as this Phoenix is cleaning up Overlords, and these Lings are... Looks like they're maybe trying to bait out some energy from these oracles, um, kind of deciding when to when to push an attack. But he sees there is so much army here. Uh, Pisoso with with 12 links, he's got 12 army supply to 42. Is there's going to be a push out? Uh, looks like a, a warp prism and a handful of sentries. And here we go, the adepts. Absolutely disgusting number of adepts. Uh, plus one missile started. Some uh, immortals on the way for riser. I'm going to take a quick look, kind of survey everything that's going on. Plus one has started with Hydralis being the answer he wants uh, He wants right now. Um, I could see it. Uh, Hydralis are, 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 a, are, a, are a very high damage unit, uh, especially if you can tank, get some tank with them, uh, maybe Ling, Bane, Hydra. Um, but right now we just have such a massive army on the other side. I don't know if there's a response Pacifica can put up against this. There's the GG. It looks like the first game is going to go to Riser. How often are tips given at McDonald's, Siegfried? I didn't know that was an option for me. I assumed they they didn't take him. Well, okay, you're telling me they didn't take him. Um, but um, how often do you find yourself getting a tip? All right, so we're going to reload this game again. Uh, we're going to get into game number two. So Riser has conti is continued to dominate his bracket. Um, I, I think I'd have to give this next game to him. If I were a bad man, I'd have to give the, the tournament to him. Um, Pesosa pulled off some things, but I don't think the game was ever necessarily in his sway. Um, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. Game number two as <laughs> StarCraft loads up again. Da -da. We need some jams. We have some jams in the middle. So I'm like, I need like a soundboard. Be like, what, what? And then play some jams. That's what we'll do. What, what? Jam time. All right. Replay. Game number two is going to be on a biogenesis. Um, it's a good map. It's a little longer distance for rushes. Um, uh, looks like, uh, let's see. Sometimes, he's, so he says, sometimes people tip... The drive through if they have 20, 30 cents of chains, they'll just tell you to keep it. I get on average like five bucks a day if I'm in the drive through uh, It's just like bits. Yeah, McBits. I really want to spend $308 on bits. Oh. Spawning in the top left-hand corner, running through his opponents with spear and dagger. Unrelenting, it is. Riser. His opponent's in the bottom right-hand corner. Having won his game against Ribeye, 2-1. Now, lost his game against Boo, 1-2. He's hoping to take this all the way. He needs this match. It is Pasosa. Alright, so... Just a quick look at the going ons. We do have that standard Protoss opener from Riser. He's gonna drop he drops his pylon, his gateway, and he sends his probe across the map to see what's going on. You see a little bit of selection flash there is uh, Pesos is selecting, going back and forth between his uh, two hatcheries, working on that hotkey control, working on his, probably working on, let's take a look, let's take a look, what is he's, uh, this button, nope, he's this button, I think I get his camera, right, yeah, I get his camera, looks like he does a little bit of mouse movement there, uh, look, oh, he sees it, he sees a... Pylon going down. We'll go back to, to the real vision here. He doesn't see a pylon. He sees a nexus. Riser has opted to go proxy nexus, ladies and gentlemen. Um, that's his probe is doing some poking. Um, we have a proxy nexus in the... Now, maybe this is because it warps quicker. Uh, maybe he's just trying to draw drones out. I mean, I don't want to continue to speculate here. Uh, back home, he's got two gateways and they're producing zealots. Uh, he doesn't look like he's mining any gas. He might just be going for gasless 
zealots, which is a nice exercise in macro, by the way, if you want to be pro. If you want to be pro toss. Get it? Ha! <laughs> Alright, um, so we have a Nexus going down. It looks like it might even complete. Uh, he's gonna get this probe, though. This probe's not gonna have a response. This Nexus is it's gonna finish or it's gonna cancel at the last second. Now he lets it finish. All right, so we have two Nexuses on the map. We have nothing but zealots and probes on the other side. He's warping them across, ladies and gentlemen. He is warping in zealots and probes. Oh, sh I couldn't have guessed it. I didn't think expect it. He pulled them all right around that crystal and he has warped them across the map. He's got zealots and probes. He's got Let's take a look at this. 21 probes, 22 probes, well 21 over here. Oh, he's making more probes from the Nexus. He is making more probes from the Nexus. He's only got six slots on the, on the on this side of the map. He is producing two probes at a time to come join this fight. I I I don't even know. I've never seen seen this cheese. This would absolutely infuriate me if I was Pizosa. I might be throwing keyboards right now. What is this garbage? There was a Nexus in my base. I could not kill the Nexus fast enough. He let it complete and then he warped everything over there. If you had seen this coming, you'd have just pulled everything. You would have pulled all the drones. You would have pulled... You would have put spine crawlers down much earlier. But no, he shows up and absolutely warps in to his opponent's base. Uh, he's gonna get these spine crawlers. The drones are gonna come up here to try to, try to continue to mine. They only have 50 minerals. He can only produce one set of lings right now. Uh, he's gonna come over here and try to try to knock down this nexus. Because what else do you do right now? Uh, looks like he's gonna continue to boost out additional uh, workers. He's still he's mining over. He's now he's now mining more than his opponent. No, wait, the same as nope. Yep, the same as his opponent. More than more now than his opponent. He's he, we might have a reset if his opponent doesn't give up. Like, if he can take out these zealots, we might just have a complete reset with probes being made on both sides. But he's not mining. There, he may have eight workers. He's just not able to mine. This pressure from the zealots is too much. There's not enough lings on the table. There's not enough being done. And he's over here. He's starting to macker up. He's putting gas down for the first time. These zealots getting absolutely disgusting levels of damage. We're down to three workers. We're down to one worker. He has no minerals. He has no workers. He has one supply. I, I only imagine he's trying to plug in his broken keyboard right now as he's thrown it across the room and there's the GG. And Rice, <laughs> absolutely. Uh, uh, yeah, he does that thing. He absolutely does that thing, and that might be uh, if if I did a series for like best clips, like you should clip some of that. Um, that's that's the moment to watch. Whew. He takes it. He takes his match. Two zero, and moves on undefeated in his round of sixteen group, up to the round of eight. Um, and if I'm taking a look, let me take a look at these scores real quick. So, uh, Riser. Is, let me take a look at it while StarCraft loads. Let me not forget that I have to reload this. So, uh, Riser is currently 6 0. Um, P. Sosa, who's also done his, his completed his games, uh, he won. Oh, so, oh, the Riser's 3 0, right? So, it's number of games won first. So, 3 0 with, uh, you know, six wins. Uh, 6 0 six maps. So, Pesosa is. He won one. He won. He won one. So he's one to two. And looks like his maps are two, three. So three wins and one, two, three. Wait, I'm, I'm doing. Okay. Um, so, so one, three. But he. That means he lost one. Two, three, four, five. All right. So we're going into Boo and Ribeye. And right now, Boo is um, he won he won one, lost one. So he's he's won one. Um, and Ribeye should be he lost one, lost two. So he's o oh, two right now. Um, so the winner of this, so this, this is, I gotta, I'm doing, I'm doing the mental math, right? So the winner of this match, if it's Boo, he's a two-one, and he'll, he'll will continue. 
if ribeye wins he'll be uh one two but he he'll be one two and his opponent will be one two ah and so everybody will be if, if ribeye wins this everyone in the bracket will be one two um so if I was right to that. If Boo wins, he advances. Um, if Ribeye wins, map score. All right, map score determines, and all three, all three people will be one two. So, right now, the map score for Boo is. Let me make sure I do this right. So he. He went, he's 1-1, one, one, so he, there we are, so he's, um, two maps, he's won, he's lost three. The ribeye, um, is right there, so he's lost four, he's 1-1, one, one, so he's 1-4, and that, that all adds up. So, if Ribeye wins this um, 2 0, he will. He'll be tied with Pasosa for wins, and he'll be ahead with the losses. Um, but I'm not sure on the time mechanics, so maybe Shazam can help me out there. Um, if Ribeye doesn't win this 2 0, he's not in the contention. Um, so that means if he wins it 1 2 which is the only other math we have. So if he wins at 1-2, that makes... If he, wins it, yeah, if he wins at 2-1, that means Boo is 3-5. Three, um, three, and we have a tie for Pesosa and Boo. Um, so this is if 1-2. If 1-2... Okay, so, ah, all right. So if everybody wins... 2-0, he is tied with Pasosa. If Ribeye wins 2-1, um, no, if he went, oh gosh, this is so, all right, he is, it is a three-way tie. If Ribeye wins 2-1, it is a three-way tie. That's it. Those are the only ways that goes. Um, all right, let's get into the replay. So, as I repeat again, if Boo wins, he advances. If Ribeye wins a 2-0, he is tied with Pesosa. If Ribeye wins 2-1, it's a three-way tie. No, I messed something up. So I don't, I don't know how a, how a, um, how it would be if their map scores was 3-5 and 3-4. Pesosa and Ribeye, they would be tied, but the map scores would be different. But. Like map losses are different. Uh, if everybody wins two ways, three way tie, including map score. I don't know if any of that made sense on 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 camera. So what do you know? What I'll do? Let me just go ahead and um, screen capture real quick. Um, that no, let's not do it that way. Let's screen capture more of it. Let's screen capture the whole thing. All right. There we go. Let's take a look at this. Now that I've, I've typed out some stuff in Notepad. So, what we have is, this is the, this right here, this section in the middle is the current scores and map scores. Uh, that's nonsense. That was me working some things out. So, if Boo wins, he'll be 2-1, and no one else competes with him. Uh, so, he'll advance. If Ribeye wins, he'll be 1-2, and... No, okay, if Ribeye wins, he'll be 2-1. Or, sorry, 1-2, and he'll be tied with Pesosa. Um, and it's not, it's never a three-way tie. It's never a three-way tie. Okay, so, if, essentially, if Ribeye wins, it's a, it, it is a, if Ribeye wins, oh, man. He is tied with Pesosa, but including map score. All right, there we go. So Boo has to win to advance. If Ribeye wins, he's tied with Pesosa in some weird ways. If he wins 2-0, um, he's won more games and lost less. If he wins 2-1, he's... Sorry. Yeah, if he wins 2-0... Uh, this is ridiculous. 
Um, let's just do this. I, I can absolutely just type this here. Um, so if Boo wins, he advances because it's two one, and it, it, this doesn't this doesn't matter right now. Like the map score wouldn't wouldn't matter. He advances. If Ribeye wins two zero, what happens is Boo becomes one two. Um, he gets two more maps. Excuse me, two more map score losses. Uh, Ribeye goes one two, and he goes um, three four, which I think should make him the winner. Um, but we'll see. We'll we'll see what the actual tie scores are. If Ribeye wins, however, comma if Ribeye wins two one, he takes the win. Boo takes the loss. Boo takes a map. Excuse me, that's not that's not it. He takes a map. And takes two more losses, makes it three five losses, one two, which makes ribeye one two as well. Yeah, one one two as well with three. Yeah, three five. There it is. Yeah, I'm right. If 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 ribeye wins two one, it's a three way tie. That all works out, right? I'm gonna leave this. I'm going to leave this here for a moment. Take a look. If I'm comparing it right, it is always terrifying because I could just be getting it wrong. So 2-1, 3-5, three, 3-5, three, all the way across. So let's get into these replays. And um, we'll we'll work this math out so we, we keep the suspense going. Uh, but it is Boo versus Ribeye. And this, this determines the next person to advance. Like, this is it. We gotta load an older version again. I got a little more vodka. It's like the last of the vodka in the house, too. It's frightening. That's more frightening than stream math. <laughs> Pour some out for Sig's motherboard. Mm -mm -mm -mm. All right. So, if we go on. Uh, if we're talking about just Elo here, um, Boo is uh, mildly favored here. Um, so it could just be a clean victory and nobody has to do any confusing Thai math. Um, but the difference isn't that far. It's 17 to 23. This is probably the closest match. Uh, this, yeah, this is the closest, should be the closest match um, in the game. I mean, Pesosa and Boo as well. I guess they're, they're both five Elo apart. So this is... Still going to be a good match. Um, let's do our introductions then, shall we? In the bottom right-hand corner, the Red Zerg. Hoping to clear his way to the finals. It's Boo. In the top left-hand corner. Hoping to clear his way to the finals. It is Ribeye. Both these players um, doing some openings, right? Doing some things. We have an opening here, and it's got a hatch. And a gas. And a pool. An opening over here has got a, a gas first. Followed by a hatch. Followed by a pool. So this extra gas and what he decides to do with it will tell the story. These are the differences that separate champions. Champion one, down here. Champion two, up here. All right. So we'll take a look at the tie stuff, actually. We'll give this game a moment to flesh itself out. Let's look at the All Invitational. Um, there's a Liquidpedia. There's an upload. There's a rules section. Let me pull this up. And then I'll get back to the stream so I can read it. And we go to the tie section. Because um, we might really need it. We might absolutely need to worry about ties. Um, all right. So here we go. Um, I have the tie rules right here. We have a couple links coming out. Um, yeah, play that again. Uh, it says, in the group stage, ties will be broken uh, in order of total number of match wins. So, um, 
than total number of matches played by game record and lastly heads up record if there is still a tie then it will be determined by a coin flip so what I'm getting out of this is they have the same number of match wins they'll all be two match wins they'll all have the same number of matches played for a total of uh, well, this was the part I need clarification on so this is not a match this is a game right so um, if, so okay uh, total number of match wins total number of matches played and by game record and lastly heads up record it will be a three way tie um, so let's take a look at it let's look at who, who beat who in, in what and that will determine if we get a coin flip I would love to see a coin flip can we do the coin flip on stream if it's a coin flip uh, we do have some banelings coming into the mix making this zerg fight uh, a little rough both of them actually taking thirds behind this um, but boo gutsy enough to continue to make drones nope uh, there are the banelings coming in and, and get, making good connections on those morphing banelings. Uh, so, heads up record. So, who beat who? Um, if this is like a three-way dance is what I'm, I'm hoping for. So, we'll get a... Um, we should, and I know somebody will have to clarify, but we should actually get a coin flip uh, on who gets to go on. And that will be... That, that should infuriate everybody. Um, oh, good... Good connection there. Boo gets out of there with one bandling. Another push over here. As this is going to be a, a ling dance, all across all across the map, um, deciding when to take these engages, when not to take these engages. A roach warren actually being made for ribeye. Uh, if he gets this off and continues to sustain the defense, this gives him uh, a great position. Roaches um, really change up the dynamic here. And if he has roaches and his opponent doesn't, and he doesn't. Uh, he can find himself in a very good position. But more Banes here as Boo actually looks like he's going to get some good free hits over here. Uh, Queen fighting off uh, one Ling as the Banelings decide that's not the fight they want to take. Um, these three Banelings moving moving in, actually getting taken out there by the Queen, uh, self-destructing. As Boo comes in here to try to get some damage, finds himself fighting Lings, getting the focus fire down. He's trying to get some Lings, or tries to get some drones, and now he's running away to the main. Um, successfully pushed off. But back over here, the story is three Lings trying to take down a hatchery, but they're going to find themselves met with opposition as Ribeye sends more lings over there. All right. We actually have a, a lot. We had a pull for a second there of a lot of, a lot of drones. Um, maybe probably want to saturate this third soon and, and get all the pulls going over here, but we do have an evolution chamber. We do have a couple of roaches that should be coming out here uh, shortly um, for Ribeye. And now that he's wait, He's, yeah, he's got his Roach Warren. Um, could be mind games, though. Maybe he just wants to fight the Ling Bling. Uh, we do have some Lings over here now protecting the third from counterattacks. And looks like they're both... Well, looks like Ribeye is starting to drone up. And Boo is uh, absolutely uh, setting up for an attack. And lots of army being created right now. He's actually in a really good position if he spreads some of these... I'd say if he spreads some of these drones out, but he wants to put some gas here, so... Um, he's got three bases. He's got uh, the huge worker advantage, and this army advantage that he's been allowed to get because of this um, is going to go a long way. Those were those couple extra drones he was pushing up while he he defended the attack and pushed it away that are going to give him uh, absolute dangerous push. Um, there's going to be roaches. There's going to be lings. There's going to be banes, and he's even managed to get his creeps right here as he focuses on some great core fundamentals. Um, Plus one missile for both of them. Roach speed actually being started um, for Boo. If we take a look over here, we do have Layer Tech has just started. He's going to be a little bit behind, but he's going. He's opting for the second Evolution Chamber. He's hoping to to take some of this fight and upgrades. If we take a quick scan around, we only have the one Evo Chamber here. Um, it's going to allow that two one when uh, turn that two one when Boo's only operating on on two zero. A um, little bit of indecisiveness as he decides whether or not to push out. Queen getting the inject there. Good queen. Wait a, wait a macro. All right, larva, and a hatch. Nice little macro hatch. I like those. It gives vision. It gives larva, and it's going to support uh, this push whenever he decides to take it. Uh, the workers still tell the story. It's still 
24 workers advantage. He's, he's mining almost 1,000 minerals more, um, uh, double the gas, um, and nearing up on... Looks like he's trying to produce a lot of upgrades right now. Rich speed's about to finish. He started plus two uh, melee, or plus two missile, excuse me. Um, and this is going to be spotted, and this is going to be met with a roach on roach battle. Um, depending on where the army is, when they engage, what the numbers look like, this could be a really good fight. A roach control. Uh, these banelings are going to morph mid-fight. Um, and where they decide to go now that there's not a lot of lings on the map, do they do they throw themselves against the roaches? Uh, there are no drones up here. There is a set of banelings. Um, nice little sacrifice there, I guess, against, um, there we go. That's some hits. I mean, they're not, they're not the greatest thing against roaches, but you need that little bit of extra damage. That helps him finish him off, actually, the concave. He had the numbers. Um, kills him a little quicker. Gets him over here in this base a little quicker. And there's the GG. And Boo takes the first game. All right. I might not have to do any math at all. If Boo takes this next game, he will advance into the next round, and it will be Boo and Riser leaving Group A. Um, but if we take a look at the, the whether or not we need a, a coin flip, um, it's going to be a circle of players. So I ignore the games with Riser in it. Let's just go ahead and copy this. If I ignore the game with Riser, I ignore the games with Riser so I can delete him. Uh, let's do delete him. Let's delete him. I know everybody's like, oh, we should have ignored the games with Riser anyway. He was too good. Um, Sosa beats Ribeye. Sosa loses to Boo. Uh oh. Wait a minute. So this is a triangle, right? So it's like a Pasosa beats Rib Eye, who if he who's got to beat Boo, right? Like that's got to be what happens. Like Rib Eye, if Rib Eye beats Boo, and then Boo beat Pasosa, it it would be a triangle, like. Pasosa would beat Ribeye, right? And then Ribeye beat... If Ribeye beats Boo, if he 2 owes him right now, and then Boo has beaten Pasosa, um, and it's a circle. We we might have a coin flip, ladies and gentlemen. We absolutely might get into a coin flip situation. Um, unless I'm misinterpreting these rules, um, which I don't know how I would if it looks like this. If it looks like 1, 2, 3, 5, all the way down... Heads up, triangle. I'm rooting for a coin flip. I'm. I just want it to happen. I want Ribeye to to two of this. He's he's a little. He's behind. He's got to win two games, um, and I don't. I don't know the result. And I'm really excited. I am super super stoked to see what we get here. Um, if 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 they're not watching, start start poking your all in friends. This this could be the craziest group we have. This could be what they want to watch. Boo and Ribeye could be causing damage. Like this this could be it. I mean, or we could end or we could end like in one game in three minutes. I I mean I don't know. Um, but if you're not here, you should be. That's what you got to tell them. If you're not here, you should be. Uh, we're gonna get into these replays. We're gonna grow into game number two. Um, and we're hoping, uh, we're rooting for, we're rooting for a Boo victory. No, a ribeye victory. We're hoping for a ribeye victory so we get the craziness. If Boo wins, he wins. Now that that's all sorted out, let's let's play some StarCraft. Let's watch some games. We need StarCraft. Stop talking about math and tie games and coin flips. We load into Blackpink for game number two. Boo versus Ribeye. We'll go ahead and start a best of three. And we call Boo the winner of round one. Spawning in the top right hand corner in red. One game away from going into the round of eight. It is all ins, Boo. His opponent in the bottom left in the light blue. Seafoam blue. It is ribeye. We're all rooting for a 2-0 and a coin flip here, ladies and gentlemen. Let's coin flip our way into the round of eight. It would be the most fantastic thing ever. Um, coin flip between three people. 
So, down here we have ribeye taking a natural. But an early spawning pool for his opponent. It's way too early to tell. Way too early for me to get excited. There is a gas. He's actually doing it on 17. This could just be early economic build. Little defensive. What are you gonna do, drone? Anything cheeky? Anything? He's making a natural. Alright, down here, we do have the spawning pool going up. 17, 17, 17 for ribeye. Forlings being produced by Boo. Uh, just a nice, safe, defensive number. Get a little scouting done, get a little poking in. Um, looks like he's going to send them places. So oh, he's changed his places. I can't follow the green lines. Um, he's going to send them across the map. Maybe do a little poking. Get off a good scout. Because um, at this point, he doesn't know where what his opponent's up to. He has not seen it. He's not, drew, he's not scouted. Um, we are seeing... A little bit of a little bit of oversaturation here, as drones aren't being sent over uh, to the natural quite yet. Uh, four first four links coming in here. Four links being made. Four more links being made by ribeye. Um, it looks like he's gonna push this out though, and that was a oh, oh they're coming back. They're poking in, and there goes the queen and a couple links. Uh, they're gonna push this back. Over on this side, we have a baneling a baneling nest. And speed's about halfway done. Those things are going back home. All right, uh, Roach Warren opted here for uh, ribeye. This could be Ling Bane and Roaches. Could have some interesting fights here. Metabolic boost finishing up just now uh, on both sides. Uh, but we do have a stream of lings, a huge series of lings flooding across the map. Actually, kind of going out of their way to avoid being seen. They're going to go over to this third. They're going to start morphing some bane lings in. And looks like they're going to start a fight. Now, five roaches, however, for ribeye. Once these five roaches come out, as long as he keeps these lings in play, uh, this becomes a much different fight. And much harder for... Um, for Boo to kind of finish off in this aggressive end, but he can't lose these links to this fight. He's going to lose his queen. There are the roaches. A little bit of a uh, missed micro there. Um, as the roaches kind of stuttered a bit, trying to rally. Uh, but these Bane links are going to get taken out by the roaches. Um, the queen's going to fall to the links. Uh, the queen might fall as he barely managed to save on to... Uh, barely managed to keep on to his ling. This is a hero queen. Managed to save and push back his opponent. Um... It was actually looking like they're preparing for the counterattack. So we do have uh, the spines coming up, a handful. All I'm across here. Uh, it is a lot of lings, and uh, he decided to actually invest in one more spine crawler, um, having. I don't know if he'd seen the army coming across the map. There were no, um, no, no observers in that middle path, but uh, he sees it now, and he knows what's to be expected. Looks like uh, he's going. He's trying to get a good surround here, trying to get these slings on the back, preventing a retreat, uh, keeping him in the range of the spine crawler, taking the fight where he wants to take it. Excellent move by Boo there. Just as simple as uh, pre-positioning his army to take that fight. Uh, but now he gets the surround on these roaches. He gets the surround on the links. He absolutely has the numbers to take this out. Uh, these roaches are trapped, and a couple links try to at least fall back to the roaches shaving off a few lings there before the main army gets into position and trying to find kind of some surface area where they can deny their opponent um, space for an attack. But these lings are just going to skip right ahead. Actually, no roach speed finished. Uh, so they're going to run right into the main. It looks like they're going to try to do as much damage as they can before the roaches catch up. 24 more lings on the way, but they're going to be a few seconds here where they may get the queen, where they may get a few workers. And there they go. And there's the fight. And they actually rallied away for a little bit, giving the chance, um, giving the chance for Boo 
to back up just a little bit. Uh, Ling's over here, poking over here at the natural. There's more Ling dancing going on. And thank you, Shazampu, for the cheer. You are fantastic. And Double Do dies at the end, he says. Did I? Yeah, I get that. Yeah, it says, it says I get a message. Look at that. I didn't know it. I get a message. They're right in the center of the screen. Um, you my dude, man. You are my dude. All right. He, uh, Twitch is going to start wondering where all their their advertisement money went, and they're gonna they're gonna trace it back to me, and they're gonna trace it back to you. All right, there we go. Absolutely great surrounds there um, on the queen, but uh, good better response by Boo as he manages to save it. He's chasing around uh, all these lings with a bane, keeping them from getting into the fight and engaging. Um, there goes a spire. Uh, now, was that... I believe that might not have been spotted. That was spotted just barely. If he's paying if he's, if he's paying attention to it, he sees a, a spire has gone down. Um, and his response to this is going to be five more roaches because he knows the counterattack is coming. Uh, there is a lair. There is no additional tech. He looks like he wants to... Remember, he wants to sit on roaches a little longer. Um, his opponent working up towards uh, something else. Uh, these lings over here getting shaved off just a little bit. They poke it and turn around. I believe uh, Harry Potter, right? The book comes out, and you imagine there's uh, I'm talking about Dumbledore dying at the end. There's a you know lines all over the nation for it, and somebody gets hold of a copy early-ish, however early it is, they get a hold of it and they flip to the back page and they they find out that Dumbledore dies. So they drive to the Barnes and Noble or you know whatever the bookstore is where these people are waiting outside for the midnight release of Harry Potter. They stick their head out the window and they yell, "Dumbledore dies at the end." Um, Jesus Christ, I'd be furiated. I mean, if you're waiting in the line for Harry Potter, that's not what you want to hear. You don't want to hear, you don't want it spoiled. And that might have some jackals. Um, but anyway, we have a move out. This one has Mutilisk, which is going to give some great harassing power. Um, it's going to take out, you know, queens from the equation. The queens have to respond, um, either to the mutas or to the lings. Um, and you split them up that way. And with this army advantage, 40 to 25, this worker advantage of 50 to 32, three bases, this is pressure that Boo can continue to hammer home. Um, he just, he, he can take mildly inefficient fights, um, and he'll take it. He gets the spore crawler down. Actually comes in to get the other spore crawler down. He's focusing on all the things that are going to stop his mutilus from, from answering this. Um, just sending in a couple links for it. Uh, now the, the links come in for round two, and he's continuing to spend money on spore crawlers, putting down spore sets after set of spore crawlers so we can answer these mutilists which come in here and they're going to get the gas looks like they might get nope they might get the spore crawler but no not worth not worth the trade for them uh, not worth the shots uh, as he's going to pull back um getting three drones uh getting three drones to the attacks are kind of suiciding against a handful of spore crawlers uh you really do need more more mutas than that uh, to throw your head against the wall but instead of mutas we have lings and this combination of ling muta uh, really puts his opponent on the back foot. There's, he moved out so many overlords in an attempt to cover uh, vision that once these mutas came out and started clearing out, you saw he was actually supply blocked there um, for a moment. Um, so these mutas doing a great job of punishing it. Four more in creation behind this. Uh, several links in position for the third. As long as he keeps his opponent in two bases, you see this main is mining out. Uh, this natural is not even fully mining with all the drones he's been losing, all the army he's being forced to produce. Um, he's continuing to lose drones over here as they get in from an angle the spore crawlers can't cover, and they're gonna take a take some shots over here. The spore crawler as it tries to rebearer itself, um, picking off one spore crawler, making it even harder to answer this answer this call. Um, you see that he has his own mutas now, uh, but two mutas do not answer ten mutas. Um, take a look at the number of mutas. It it is six on eleven. Um, and the spire's down. He's not going to have another answer for this. He's actually sat under the spores long enough to take that. Uh, so it's going to be uh, 10 to 6 right now. And he's he's actually suiciding in on the spore. He's going to move over here and start picking off uh, more mutas. Opting now for uh, Hydra's Den. Um, and it looks like in combination with his queen, he's going to be able to push this back just a little bit. Um, but he's still got a spire. He can still make more. And it's, it's, it's 3 to 2 with a handful of links. Still no third base. Still working with roaches. The roaches don't shoot up. Uh, this is going to be a lot of free hits. They're going to get this around. This move command, they're not fighting back. Uh, seeing it at the last moment. Um, absolutely melting. Uh, melting these lings. Uh, 
Take a look at the supplies. 52 to 114. Uh, he's got... Boo has 24, more than 24 um, worker supply. It looks like he tried to take a sneaky third, hoping it wouldn't be spotted, but right under an overlord. Uh, he's going to get the cancel, and he's going to get the drone while he's at it. Uh, these mutilists coming in here for another swing. Um, roaches, more roaches on the way. Nothing to answer this, but uh, spine crawlers and spores. Um, there are still a couple mutas in the air, but he has not been able to make him. The hydralist den uh, is finished. He should could be making hydralist um, to answer this, but none have been produced yet. Only seven more roaches coming. Um, pretty good on the spores. The spores are doing a great job, but 24 workers absolutely mutilated. Now he's just got free reign of these spore crawlers. He's got no queen. He's got no roaches. Uh, he took out the last of the mutilists. Um, I believe this is the end, and Boo takes this. 2-0 and finds himself outside of Group A, moving on to the round of eight. Congratulations to all players here today. Uh, Riser absolutely dominating this competition, and Boo winning uh, the most important game uh, that he had to win, taking it to uh, walking out of here uh, the only person to win. Um, whew, those were a great series of games. I'd like to thank... Oh, I don't even need this anymore. Uh, you don't need this math. Hey, math. Um, thank you. Thank you, everybody, for watching, and continue to root for your favorite players. Uh, we should be seeing uh, at least group, at least another group on Sunday being cast, if not a group also on Friday. As long as I get two completed groups before tomorrow, Friday, it'll be about the same time, and we'll sit here and we'll cast some games. And um, I'm looking forward to hanging out with you. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks, Siegfried, for the sub. Thanks, Shazam, for throwing, throwing cheers and messages at me. Uh, Boo Radley, he says, easy, he wins it. He's got uh, meme faces all over the place. I love it. What were they called again? Oh man, I forgot the name of the guy and the, and the meme and the. It don't matter. You're great. That was fantastic. Actually, I really loved your play there. You stayed absolutely on top of the on top of your opponent the entire time, um, coming through when we really needed you to. So actually, I'm going to follow both of your careers and saw into the round of eight, and and maybe we'll get down to just enough people that I can remember these games and I can remember your performance. And I'm really looking forward to the end of this. Um, bam, Shazam says, bam. And uh, thank you. And you know, I'm going to do a hangout. I'm going to go in the chat or something. So if you guys want to, to hang out, I'm going to, you know, beg, bar, and steal Shazam for for at least 30 minutes. Hang out with two of us and uh, play some games, play some arcade or not, um, or just chat. If you're watching us on YouTube and you want to see it live, just follow me on on Twitch. I think most of you do anyway. Um, if you want to watch it on YouTube, follow, go to YouTube. The rest of the matches are there, and you can skip past all this talk and all this math and all these goodbyes. So I'm going to hit the not record button now, and this thing was a total of 13 gigabytes. So my internet provider is going to love me at the end of the month. Good night.